Within her palace, Garrett and Gillet engage in a crucial deliberation. Compelled to seek Gillet's aid, she elucidates the dire circumstances. The priests have determined a date for Raken's body transfer to Meserlik. Igniting uncertainty about her own position in the Queen's domain should Raken depart. Gillet visibly displays discomfort with the notion. Expanding upon the situation, Garrett unveils the tragic fate that befell Raycon and their children at the hands of the Dragon Slayer. She expresses profound concern that Hacken's potential offspring with Lucina could spell her utter downfall. Resorting to blackmail, she paints a grim picture for Gile, implying the likeness of his sister's descent into a fate akin to the old Adar. Gile hesitates in responding, but ultimately proposes that his sister consider accepting the condition. Mindful of their humble origins and the subsequent opulence they have enjoyed since their ascent from poverty to the palace. Enraged by the suggestion, Garrett's fury reaches its peak as she hurls the cup at Gile, venting her anger towards him. The mere thought that her own brother would propose retreat is inconceivable to her. Approaching Gile, Garrett gently touches his chin, evoking memories of their impoverished past and Gile's reliance solely on his physical attractiveness, plagued by illness. She reminds him of her tireless efforts to care for him, even going so far as to purchase books he desired to read, ensuring he had no regrets in life. Asserting that she undertook these actions so he would not perish with remorse, she questions why he refuses to repay her now. Reminding him of his previous pledge to repay her kindness, recalling his words that he would do anything to assist her. Garrett expresses her belief in Gilly's promises. She credits him for eliminating her competitors, allowing her to ascend to the throne. Gripping Gilly's hair, she demands to know why he has betrayed her at this crucial juncture. Raising her voice, she questions why he no longer supports her as he once did, given that his abilities have played a significant role in securing her position. As Gile attempts to explain his reasons, he is plagued by coughs and tremors. <coughs> Concerned by his coughing, Garrett inquires if his heart condition has worsened. Gile reveals that his heart ailment exacerbates each time he utilizes black magic, as it is a side effect of his powers. However, Garrett asserts that his heart was already ailing long before that. Accusing Gile of using his illness as an excuse to avoid meeting her ever since she became queen, she laments that even now, on the brink of losing her position, Gile still employs that justification to evade helping her. She persistently blackmails Gile, recounting the hardships of their shared childhood and insinuating that he prioritizes himself over her. Suppressing his pain, Gile beseeches her to indicate how he can aid her. With a smirk adorning her face, Garrett turns to Gile. In Tarkin's room, a sumptuous feast awaits on the table. Engrossed in his own thoughts, Tarkin practices conversing with himself, contemplating how to approach Lucina, and requests that she bear his child. Frustration engulfs him as his efforts seem in vain. Unexpectedly, Lucina materializes before him, catching him off guard. Her captivating presence leaves Tarkin blushing with delight at her long-awaited arrival. He graciously invites Lucina to take a seat, anxiously inquiring if the food pleases her palate. Seemingly out of nowhere, Lucina embraces Hakan, entwining her arms around his neck and planting a gentle kiss on his lips. After their tender exchange, Lucina confesses that she missed him. Hakan playfully teases her, noting that they had already met earlier in the day prompting Lucina to clarify that it is now nighttime. Impressed by Lucina's eloquent expression of her feelings, Hakan jests whether she had rehearsed those words as well. With a soft gaze, Hakan reveals that there is something he needs to disclose to her, piquing Lucina's curiosity. However, their conversation is abruptly interrupted by the forceful swing of the door as a frantic guard rushes in, informing Hakan of a pressing issue. Catching his breath, the guard relays the news that Adair has once again descended into madness. Startled by this sudden revelation, Hakan and Lucina are taken aback, 
seeking further details. As the guard explains Adair's disruptive behavior, insisting on retaining Raken's lifeless body, Hakan rises from his seat, prepared to depart. He apologizes to Lucina, explaining that he must leave immediately, assuring her they will continue their conversation later. Left in a state of confusion, Lucina wonders what is happening right now. As Lucina makes her way back to her chamber, a sense of unease overtakes her. Titty, following closely behind, attempts to reassure her, noticing a figure passing by nearby. Titty speculates if it could be Gile. This prompts Lucina to halt and inquire about Gile's identity. Titi explains that Gile is Garrett's younger brother, renowned among the ladies for his extraordinary beauty, surpassing even that of the late queen. Titi expresses concern, wondering if something has happened to Gile, while Gile, gasping for breath, suddenly succumbs to pain and collapses. Witnessing this shocking sight, both Titi and Lucina are taken aback. Lucina quickly rushes to Gile's side, realizing that his heart has ceased beating. She realizes the urgent need to heal Gile, fearing the consequences if her abilities were to be discovered by others. Struggling with her decision, Lucina resolves to assist Gile. Instructing Titi to seek help, she promises to stay by Gile's side. Lucina carefully surveys her surroundings, ensuring there is no one nearby. Without delay, she places her hand on Gile's body, channeling her healing abilities. As Lucina tends to the unconscious Gile, she observes that his illness has reached an advanced stage, wondering if it will require multiple healing sessions. Throughout the process, Gile experiences intense sensations, as if his heart is being tightly squeezed, perceiving it as a penance for fulfilling his sister's desires. However, a sudden influx of moonlight engulfs his heart, seemingly washing away his sins. Startled, Gile opens his eyes in disbelief. Lucina, barely visible to him, inquires if he is awake. Overwhelmed, Gile wonders if Lucina possesses saintly powers. Gile sits up, realizes the absence of pain and questions what has transpired as he believed his heart had stopped beating and anticipated his impending demise. Turning to Lucina, he asks if she was the one who healed him. Lucina, taken aback by his inquiry, swiftly devises an explanation, stating that she merely found him unconscious on the ground. Gile contemplates the severity of his illness, which had proven resistant to various medications, yet Lucina effortlessly cured him, leaving him astounded. Suddenly, Gile tightly grasps Lucina's hand, urgently questioning if she possesses healing powers. Lucina is rendered speechless, her mind racing with concern that her secret ability has been uncovered. Gile assumes that Lucina hails from Brian, a land known for its individuals endowed with holy powers capable of reviving the dead. Clutching Lucina's shoulders, he insists on knowing if she employed such powers on him. Sensing the danger of the situation, Lucina cautiously retreats, freeing herself from Gile's grip. She denies his assumptions, asserting that she merely stayed by his side, waiting for someone else to provide assistance. Expressing genuine worry for his well-being, she dismisses any notion of possessing extraordinary abilities. Gile, however, remains convinced that only the holy powers of Brian's priests could have healed his illness so effortlessly. Puzzled by this revelation, as he was unaware that Hacken's betrothed possessed such powers, Gile begins to suspect that Lucina is concealing her true abilities. He probes further, questioning why she would waste her extraordinary gift suggesting that she could lead a life of freedom anywhere in the world, far from the constraints of being the dragon's mate. He then implores Lucina to escape with him, extending a helping hand in her endeavor. His thoughts drift toward a wicked desire for a life, devoid of suffering, envisioning it alongside Lucina. He reassures her, urging Lucina to flee with him and promising to assist her in their shared pursuit of liberation. Nevertheless, Lucina resolutely declares her desire to remain by Hakan's side, driven by her determination to become the queen. Unyielding, 
Jillay persists in his efforts, warning Lucina about the peril she would face by carrying a guardian dragon's child. He raises his voice, an excruciating pain that would engulf her entire being. Perplexed, Lucina seeks clarification, urging Gillay to explain the meaning behind his words. Pausing briefly, Gillay's expression transforms into a sly smirk as he probes Lucina, insinuating that Hacken has been concealing the truth from her all along. In another wing of the palace, Adair brandishes an arrow, threatening to kill anyone who dares to approach Raken's lifeless body. The guards tremble in fear, recognizing the black arrow as the very weapon that claimed the dragon's life, the same arrow that now symbolizes Raken's demise. Despite her trembling state, Adair adamantly insists that Raken is merely slumbering, convinced that he will awaken once more. Rushing to his mother's side, Haken calls out to her, desperately attempting to pacify her escalating emotions. He pleads with Adair to let go of her attachment to Raken. However, Adair's fury intensifies abruptly, accusing Hakan of being the one responsible for Raken's death. Hakan is stunned, devastated to hear such accusations from his own mother. As he sinks into despair, the other guards frantically attempt to reason with Adair, reminding her that Raken fell victim to the Dragon Slayer's attack. Yet, still consumed by rage, Adair lunges closer proclaiming that it was Hakan's actions that led to Raycan's demise and expressing her desire for him to perish as well. As Lucina's mind races with doubts about Hakan's honesty, Gillet provides further explanation. He reveals that women who become mates to guardian dragons experience excruciating pain and often meet a tragic end, with only a fortunate few surviving by sheer luck. When these women become pregnant, the majority of them suffer from deadly agony that ultimately claims their lives. Gillet also speculates that Hacken brought Lucina, a woman from Brian, as his bride to prevent causing harm and death among his own people in Tayar. Accusing Hakan of concealing the truth, Gillet suggests that Hacken's intentions were to avoid complicating the situation. Lucina's disappointment deepens upon hearing these revelations from Gillet who reassures her that she should not misinterpret Hakan's intentions and actions towards her. The situation escalates as Adar plunges the black arrow into Hakan's chest, intensifying the tension. Alongside the guards restraining Adair to prevent further harm, one of them calls for a priest to prepare holy water for Hakan, expressing concern for his well-being. Despite the pain he endures, Hakan remains stunned by his mother's actions as she continues to demand his death. Reflecting on his childhood, Hakan recalls a time when Adair, his mother, urged him to emulate his brother Raken, believing it would bring her solace. Adar affectionately patted Hakan's head, but when Raken confidently declared that Hakan could replace him in battle, Adar admonished him for speaking such words to a child. Adar conveyed that Raken and Hakan were not the same, emphasizing Raken's role as the great king who unified Tayar. The young Hakan heard those words and experienced a mixture of sadness. In the present, the priest tends to Hakan's wound, reassured that it is not severe. Hakan then rises to his feet and departs, requesting to be alone and instructing that no one follow him. Meanwhile, tears stream down Lucina's face as she contemplates the words spoken by Gile. With a determined effort, she wipes away her tears and gathers her courage, resolving to confront Hakan directly. However, Gile remains skeptical, doubting that Hakan will reveal the truth considering he was the one who took Lucina away from Brian. Undeterred, Lucina firmly asserts that she cannot place her trust in Gile, someone she has only met once, and there is a possibility that he is attempting to deceive her. With that, she turns away from Gile and walks away, leaving him behind. As Hakan walks alone towards his chamber, he suddenly pauses upon hearing Lucina call out his name. Lucina, gasping for breath, informs Hakan that she has something to ask him. However, her attention is quickly drawn to the scar on Hakan's chest, 
and she expresses her concern for his well-being. Avoiding eye contact, Hakan turns his face away and informs Lucina that he is not in a state to talk at the moment. Tenderly, he places his hand on Lucina's shoulder and advises her to leave and save their conversation for later. Refusing to back down, Lucina firmly grasps Hakan's arm and urges him to wait, insisting on tending to his wound. But as her hand approaches Hakan's injury, he intercepts it, firmly telling Lucina to stop. He states with determination that he doesn't wish to speak right now. However, Lucina remains resolute, unwilling to let him go. Unable to contain his emotions any longer, Hakan commands Lucina to leave. Startled and rendered speechless, Lucina watches as Hakan walks away, leaving her behind. Feeling a sense of sadness and disappointment, Lucina sits outside, seeking solace with Titi by her side. Titi attempts to reassure Lucina, advising her not to worry excessively about Hakan. However, Lucina expresses her desire to be alone and requests that Titi leave her be. Titi feels a pang of sadness, but assures Lucina that she can be called upon any time if needed. Left alone, Lucina contemplates the jumble of thoughts swirling within her mind. Suddenly, she hears someone inquire if she has considered their suggestion. It's Gile, ascending the stairs and approaching Lucina. Judging by her expression, Gile assumes that Lucina and Hakan haven't had a proper conversation. Gile takes a seat beside Lucina and questions why she has concealed her ability until now. However, Lucina keeps her face hidden, persistently denying possessing such abilities. Letting out a sigh, Gile surmises that Lucina hides her power out of fear that people like him burdened by pain, would seek her out and disturb her. Accusing Lucina of not recognizing the magnitude of her own power, Gile reveals that her ability would spare her from the perils of bearing Hakan's child. Hearing Hakan's name mentioned without honorifics by Gile, Lucina displays her displeasure. This prompts Gile to question whether Lucina is still in love with a man who has lied to her and used her. Lucina asserts that she remains uncertain about her feelings. Gile probes further, asking what made Lucina fall in love with Hakan, to which Lucina becomes even more disenchanted by the line of questioning. Nonetheless, she responds by mentioning Hakan's attentiveness to her story from the beginning to the end, his trust in her, and his compliments on her beauty. Underestimating the depth of her emotions, Gile asserts that he can also do the things Hakan did for her. Drawing closer to Lucina, he claims that it's not difficult to replicate, and that he would be willing to do those things for her if that's what she desires. Blushing, Gile praises Lucina, calling her beautiful and adorable. He shares that the first time he laid eyes on her, he thought she was a goddess who had come to save him. Extending his hand, Gile declares his intention to protect her, and proposes an escape together. Inside his chamber, Hakan seeks solace by consuming the Tayar's wine. The servant is on the verge of informing him about Garrett, but before she can finish, Hakan erupts in anger, commanding her to prevent anyone from entering. Unexpectedly, Turin materializes, inquiring if he may enter the room. Composing himself, Hakan inquires about Turan's intentions. Turin reveals that he learned from the priest that Hakan abandoned the treatment prematurely and is now drinking despite the unhealed wound. However, Hakan appears irritated, asserting that a mere scratch wouldn't kill a dragon. In response, Turin alters his expression, expressing concern and emphasizing that the Black Arrow could prove far more detrimental if left untreated capable of slaying even a guardian dragon. Raising his voice, Hakan demands to know what he should do, insinuating that Turan desires Hakan to incarcerate his own mother. Surprisingly, Turan agrees and proposes an alternative to imprisonment, suggesting that Adair be banished to the Valley of Fire. He cites Adair's previous proclamation of killing the last guardian dragon, which implies she desires Hakan's demise. Turan further divulges that he received news of Adair's impending exile to the Valley of Fire. Avoiding eye contact, 
He explains that Adair has spent a whole decade insulting the late king's body and recently threatened the current king's life, prompting the elders to take action. Enraged, Hakan hurls the bottle, shattering it into fragments. Fuming, he proclaims that Adair is his mother and dismisses Turan's words as nonsensical. Turan maintains a calm tone, emphasizing that Adair can no longer fulfill her duties as the king's mother, expressing his remorse. He implores Hakan not to shield Adair any longer and to make a rational decision. In response, Hakan's sword finds its way to Turan's face, poised menacingly. Unsheathing the blade, Hakan commands Turan to depart or face certain death. Turan swiftly bows, signaling his intention to leave Hakan undisturbed. The news further fuels Hakan's fury, blending sorrow and rage over his mother's plight. He unleashes his anger upon nearby objects, causing them to shatter and scatter in disarray. Suddenly, his chest wound reacts, but Hakan disregards it, consumed by profound sadness. He ponders how his mother would find solace if it were him, not his brother who perished at the hands of the Dragon Slayer. Tears stream down his face as the pain becomes unbearable, and Hakan collapses onto the ground, unable to contain his anguish any longer. In the meantime, Gilei attempts to persuade Lucina to escape from that place with him, but he receives no response except for Lucina's bewildered expression. She finds it peculiar that despite hearing compliments from Gilei, they fail to elicit any emotional reaction or happiness within her. However, when she hears similar words from Hakan, it seems to ignite a passionate response in her. Suddenly, Lucina rises abruptly and informs Gilei that she intends to visit Hakan. Despite Gilei's negative remarks about Hakan, stating that he is no better for not telling her the truth, Lucina averts her gaze and expresses concern for Hakan's well-being acknowledging the pain he must be experiencing. Without hesitation, she leaves Gilei behind. In Ader's chamber, Ader remains consumed by rage, seemingly having lost her sanity. She continues to shout, accusing Hakan of killing Raken, claiming she witnessed it herself when Hakan released an arrow towards Raken. However, her aggression subsides as she notices her cherished doll falling to the ground. It appears that Adair regains her composure, her expression softening as she gazes at the fallen doll. She realizes that her previous accusations were unfounded, as she firmly believes that Hakan would never harm Raken. Clutching the doll in her arms, Adair comprehends that Hakan had been doing everything in his power to assist his brother in the war and that Raken sacrificed his life to protect Hakan, fulfilling his promise to Adar. Memories of the past flood Adar's mind, recalling when Raken playfully teased her, stating that she couldn't bear to see Hakan suffer even a little, but she could endure the pain if it was Raken who got hurt. Adar explained at that time that as the king, Raken had a duty to safeguard Tyre, so she could endure the tears. However, if anything unfortunate were to befall her beloved Hakan, she couldn't even fathom it. In response, Raken offered his mother reassuring smiles, pledging to protect Hakan with unwavering dedication. He also assured her that their cherished Hakan would live a life of freedom, liberated from the burdens of kingship. Now, firmly grounded in the present, Adair has fully regained her senses, acknowledging the unjust actions she directed towards Hakan in her state of mindlessness. Expressing her profound regret, she shouts that her previous behavior was a result of her temporary insanity and declares her desire to apologize to Hak Khan. She pleads with the guards stationed outside her door to grant her permission to meet Hakan. However, the guards remain unresponsive, not even flinching at her plea. Amidst the remnants of the black magic ritual, Garrett praises Gilei for his accomplishments. Garrett takes delight in receiving the news of Adair's descent into madness and her subsequent attack on Hakan. Meanwhile, Gilei busies himself with tidying up his book of black magic rituals. Recognizing Hakan's long-standing vulnerability when it comes to his mother, Garrett believes that this turmoil will deter Hakan from moving Raken's body to Meserlike. 
With a hint of hesitation, Gillet shares the news he heard about Adar potentially being sent to the Valley of Fire, expressing his concern that such a fate would surely lead to her demise. However, having witnessed many individuals lose their sanity and depart from the palace due to Gillet's black magic, Garrett questions why he would be bothered by yet another impending death. With her malicious thoughts at work, Garrett contemplates that even in the midst of this significant incident, Hakan would not send his mother to jail, but rather return her to her rightful place. She begins to devise her own schemes, foreseeing personal benefits arising from the situation. As Hakan teeters on the edge of death, he experiences vivid hallucinations of the moment he was wounded by the Dragon Slayer. Helpless and unable to move, he longed for assistance until suddenly, the young Lucina appeared. In the present, Lucina finds herself inside Hakan's room and discovers him lying on the ground. Gently caressing his head, she senses the intense heat emanating from his body. Lucina's expression turns sorrowful as she contemplates whether she can trust Hakan and stand by his side. Though still uncertain, she feels a pang of sadness in her heart upon witnessing Hakan's suffering. Memories of encountering the wounded dragon resurface, evoking a profound understanding of the pain he must be enduring. Determined, Lucina employs her healing abilities to mend Hakan's wounds, driven by her desire to alleviate his pain. Suddenly, Hakan awakens, finding himself alone in the room. He takes a moment to collect his thoughts feeling a lingering sensation as if he had been immersed in a vivid dream. The recollection of his previous injury feels strikingly real. Astounded, he examines his fully healed wound, consumed by wonder and questioning how such a miraculous recovery could have occurred. Turan and the priest are en route to check on Hakan. To their astonishment, they encounter Hakan halfway, appearing completely fine despite being badly injured the previous day. Turan inquires about Hakan's well-being, intentionally bringing the priest along to assess Hakan's condition initially. However, upon seeing Hakan fully recovered, Turan is overjoyed. Unexpectedly, Hakan questions the priest if he visited his chamber to heal him the previous night. The priest denies having visited Hakan since their last encounter in the Holy Cave, leaving Hakan perplexed. Seeking clarification, Hakan turns to Turan and asks if he used the holy water to tend to his wound. Turan expresses further confusion, stating that he did not engage in such an act. As Hakan tries to make sense of the situation, he wonders how his wound from the black arrow could heal in just half a day, especially considering it had worsened due to his berserk behavior. Nevertheless, Turan interrupts Hakan's contemplation, Relieved that the wound wasn't as deep as they initially thought, the priest adds that Hakan's role as a guardian dragon might have expedited the healing process. Hakan directs his attention to his guard and inquires if anyone visited his chamber the previous night. The guard informs Hakan that Lucina had paid him a visit, expressing her desire to observe Hakan while he slept. Shocked by this revelation, Hakan realizes that the events of last night were not a dream. He then asks the guard where Lucina is. Meanwhile, outside Adar's chamber, the guards exchange concerned glances, wondering why it's unusually silent inside. They speculate that something might have happened to Adar, considering she had been sobbing throughout the entire night. Concerned for her well-being, they make the decision to investigate the room. However, much to their astonishment, they discover an empty chamber with the window wide open before them. Their anger builds up, realizing that Adar has fled. In Lucina's chamber, Titi becomes concerned as she observes Lucina's gloomy demeanor. Attempting to uplift her spirits, Titi presents her with a book detailing the history of Tayar and its dragons. Handing the book to Lucina, Titi suggests that it would be beneficial for Lucina to familiarize herself with the subject considering her future role as the Queen of Tear. However, Lucina's primary focus is to ascertain the veracity of Gile's words. As she flips through the pages, Lucina grows perplexed, 
realizing that the book contains only written text without any illustrations. Lucina explains that she is unable to read the words, as her stepmother, Baroness Berg, never taught her literacy skills. Lucina's ability to speak is solely a result of her own diligent self-learning. Turning to Titi, Lucina inquires if she can read and requests Titi to read the book aloud for her. Observing the script in the book, Titi explains that Tayar possesses various types of writing systems, and the book employs an ancient dragon script that even Titi cannot decipher. Suddenly, out of nowhere, they hear a voice calling out for Hoki, which is Hakan's nickname given by Adar. As the door swings open, Adar enters Lucina's chamber, surprising both Lucina and Titi. Concerned about Adar's appearance, Lucina and Titi approach her, inquiring about her well-being. Clutching the doll tightly, Adar appears bewildered and mentions that she is searching for Hoki. Unaware of Adar's true identity, Lucina and Titi inquire if she is referring to her son. Noticing the book that Titi had placed on the nearby table, Adar suddenly grabs it, proudly declaring that she is the author of the book. Lucina seeks confirmation that Adar indeed wrote the book, to which Adar confidently affirms. She reveals that she wrote it to read to her sons. Lucina feels a sense of relief, having found someone who can read and write in the ancient dragon language. Adar then takes a pen and begins writing in the book, informing Lucina that she will teach her. While making his way to Lucina's chamber, Hakan walks with a confused expression, lost in deep contemplation. He ponders the possibility of Lucina being the same little girl who healed him ten years ago. However, he wonders why Lucina never used her healing power to cure her own skin rash, if she truly possesses such abilities. Nevertheless, his mind continues to race, considering the possibility that Lucina may be hiding her powers from others. Arriving in front of Lucina's chamber door, Hakan still questions whether Lucina is truly the young girl who saved him. To his astonishment, he hears Adar's voice emanating from inside the chamber. Observing Adar teaching Lucina the ancient dragon script with the same care she would teach her own children, Lucina attentively absorbs every detail. Hakan watches from a distance, witnessing Adar's radiant smile, which stirs up a mix of emotions within his heart. It has been ten long years since he last saw Adar's smile so warmly. Lucina informs Adar that her name is Lucina, not Hoki, as she had previously referred to herself as Hoki. Adar appears confused, prompting Lucina to remind her that she was initially searching for her son, Hoki. This revelation leaves Adir looking perplexed, as if she has forgotten everything that transpired earlier. Suddenly, they are startled by the sound of Hakan's voice, inquiring about their activities. Surprised by Hakan's unexpected presence, Lucina calls out to him from her location. Hakan wonders why Adair is here, instead of being in her own room. Adar remains silent, gazing at Hakan. Lucina rises to her feet and explains to Hakan that she was learning how to read and write with Adi. Lucina knows Adar as Adi. Upon hearing Lucina refer to Adar as Ati, Hakan becomes puzzled. Lucina then clarifies that Adi was the one who had helped her in the past, asking Hakan if he knows Adi. Observing Hakan's formal language and respectful demeanor towards Adi, Lucina wonders if Adi holds a high position. As Lucina and Hakan converse, Adar continues to appear perplexed. Suddenly, it dawns on her that the person before her is Hakan. Adar calls out to Hakan, tears welling up in her eyes as she remembers that she was indeed searching for Hakan. Adar regains her composure, tears streaming down her face as she expresses deep regret for her previous actions. Witnessing this scene from her vantage point, Lucina is filled with confusion. Within the confines of the Queen's Palace, Garrett descends the stairs leading to a hidden chamber, deep in contemplation over the report relayed by her servant. The servant diligently followed Garrett's instructions, ensuring the window in Adair's quarters remained open, allowing Adar to escape. Additionally, 
the servant witnessed Adar making her way towards Lucina's palace, and later observed King Hakon also heading in that direction. Seeking guidance from Garrett, the servant inquires about the next course of action. Upon entering the room, Garrett directs her attention to Gile, posing the question of his readiness. Gile, seated on the ground amidst the preparations for the black magic ritual, trembles hesitantly but confirms that he is ready. Despite his trepidation concerning his sister, Gile attempts to express his opinion to Garrett. He voices his concern that Adar has already lost her sanity, warning that subjecting her to further black magic will permanently sever her ties to reality. However, Garrett forcefully nudges Gile's head, firmly stating that Adar opposes her union with Hakan and has made attempts to oust her from the Queen's palace. Garrett insists that Adar must never regain her sanity, threatening that failure to comply will result in her demise. After being forcefully pushed by Garrett, Gile stumbles and falls to the ground. Under the weight of Garrett's threats, Gile reluctantly begins casting the black magic spell, carefully pouring the liquid into the water-filled plate that he had prepared. As the liquid settles, the reflection on the water surface reveals Adar, Hakan, and Lucina. Suddenly, a vision floods Adar's mind, depicting Lucina aiming a black arrow at a young Hakan. Consumed by rage, Adair raises her hand, clutching the pen tightly, and launches an attack on the speechless Lucina. Witnessing the escalating situation before him, Hakan swiftly intervenes, restraining Adar and prying the pen from her grasp, tossing it aside. However, as Hakan turns his attention to Lucina, he is struck with shock when he sees her covering one of her eyes in disbelief. Opening her hand, a scar etches across her face. Hakan seethes with anger, witnessing the harm inflicted upon his beloved. Meanwhile, Adar, still lost in her deranged state, shouts accusations, blaming Lucina for the deaths of her son and expressing her twisted desire to kill her. Hakan, rendered speechless, holds the trembling Lucina tightly in his arms, his heart shattered by Adar's actions. He calls out for the guards, urgently requesting their assistance, while cradling Lucina protectively. Devastated by Adar's actions, Hakan believes that now Adar also seeks to harm his beloved. He reconciles with the fact that if Adar vented her anger on him, he could bear it, as he already carries guilt for his brother's death. As the guards restrain Adar, tears streaming down Hakan's face, he commands them to take her to the Valley of Fire. With unwavering resolve, he declares that anyone who harms the king or his spouse will face severe punishment. The guards obediently escort the weakened Adar away, her strength depleted. Continuing to cradle Lucina in his arms, Hakan instructs Tiddy to summon the priest. Avoiding direct eye contact, Hakan feels a profound sense of guilt that Lucina has been hurt, blaming himself for not properly dealing with the criminal. Hakan promises that such an incident will never happen again. In the armory, Turan enters, expressing disbelief as he confirms with Hakan if Adar is truly going to be sent to the Valley of Fire. Turan's expression reveals his shock. Hakan, with a stoic expression, states that the elders should find solace in knowing that the one who threatened the last guardian dragon will soon be eradicated. Before Turan can argue further, Hakan forcefully slices through a straw man, declaring that anyone who attempts to harm the king and his spouse will be cast into the Valley of Fire, emphasizing that this is how Tyre's law functions. Tehran continues to try and change Hakan's mind, raising concerns about the potential guilt Lucina may feel if she discovers that the king's mother is being punished because of her. Hakan firmly asserts that no one within the palace should utter a word about it. He proclaims that everything regarding Adair will be erased from their discussions, forbidding any mention of her, and warns that severe punishments await those who violate this decree. Meanwhile, in another part of the palace, Jile walks alone, occasionally coughing, questioning if he had lost consciousness after employing black magic. 
Noticing the presence of servants nearby, Gile inquires if anything significant occurred while he was absent. The servant hesitates, citing the king's orders not to discuss the matter. Perplexed, Gile presses for clarification regarding the prohibition on discussion. However, the servants quickly flee, seeking permission to leave. Observing their hurried retreat, Gile wonders what is happening and speculates if Hakan has been harmed once again. Suddenly, Lucina emerges and grasps Gile's clothing, leaving him taken aback. With resolute eyes, Lucina declares that she has something to ask him. Lucina directly confronts Gile, seeking his knowledge about the woman whom Hakan intends to send to the Valley of Fire. Having previously inquired with Titi, who was also unaware of the details, Lucina believes Gile might have the information she seeks. However, still plagued by coughs, Gile asks for clarification regarding what she means by the Valley of Fire. Suddenly, a shocking realization grips him, causing Gile to urgently grasp Lucina's shoulder, desperately seeking confirmation if Hakan intends to send Adar to the Valley of Fire. Lucina, now confused, questions who Adar is. She explains that Hakan issued an order to send someone named Adi to the Valley of Fire, prompting Lucina to inquire about Adi's true identity. Taken aback by the revelation, Gile struggles to comprehend the gravity of the situation, finding it hard to believe that, because of his actions, Hakan would condemn Adar to a death sentence. Witnessing Gile's speechless state, Lucina insists on learning the truth. Even though she understands that Hakan has forbidden any discussion of the matter within the palace. Trembling, Gile stammers, attempting to provide an answer to Lucina's question. However, before he can complete his response, someone calls out for Lucina. It is Hakan, and his expression is filled with fury upon seeing his beloved in the presence of another man. Both Lucina and Gilai are taken aback by Hakan's sudden appearance. With an intense glare, Hakan demands to know what Gilai is doing with his spouse. Panicking, Gilai quickly withdraws his hand from Lucina's shoulder, desperately trying to explain himself. However, Hakan moves swiftly, walking faster than Gilai's words can catch up. Without hesitation, Hakan seizes Gilai by the collar expressing his outrage at Gile daring to touch his spouse's body and threatening him with death. Sensing the need to prevent further misunderstandings, Lucina interjects, stating that it is not what it appears to be, and that Hakan has misunderstood the situation. However, Hakan, still seething with anger, demands to know what nonsense Gile has been telling Lucina. Stepping in, Lucina intervenes, raising her voice and urging Hakan to listen to her. Gile coughs once Hakan releases his grip on his collar. Lucina then turns her gaze to Gile, instructing him to leave as she needs to have a private conversation with Hakan. Gile bows respectfully, requesting permission to depart. Once Gile departs, leaving them alone, Lucina summons her courage and directly questions Hakan about the nonsense he had asked Gile earlier regarding the possibility of death for sleeping with the guardian dragon. Hakan's expression reveals his shock at her words. Lucina continues, questioning him about the reason he took her away, implying that it was to replace a woman from Tayar. Trembling, Lucina expresses her disappointment that Hakan chose to keep this information hidden from her. She asks him if he concealed the truth in order to prevent her from running away once she discovered it. Hakan hesitates in his response, explaining that he never intended to hide the truth from her, and that he had wanted to tell her for a long time. However, unable to contain her tears any longer, Lucina turns away from Hakan. Despite his attempts to reach out to her, she evades his touch and declares that she doesn't want to talk to him at the moment. With tears streaming down her face, Lucina departs leaving Hakan to confront his own profound regret etched across his features. Throughout his life, Hakan has grown accustomed to women fleeing from him, paying no heed to their pursuit, until ultimately they resign themselves to giving up on him. However, he finds himself questioning why he feels such profound pain when Lucina rejects him. 
He acknowledges that Lucina is the first person to offer him a genuine smile, someone who has become incredibly close to him. She resembles the very dream he had held on to since childhood, rekindling his hope in life. In that moment, Hakan comes to a realization he is falling in love with Lucina. While strolling alone, seeking solace for her pain, Lucina is suddenly greeted by a whisper. Jille emerges from behind a pillar, signaling Lucina to remain silent. Approaching him cautiously, Lucina inquires about Gile's well-being. Playfully, Gile teases her, suggesting that she could heal him, but he quickly reassures her that he is only joking, fearing that Hakan would swiftly put an end to his life if he witnessed such an act. Regaining his seriousness, Gile informs Lucina that their primary concern should be saving Adair. Lucina is taken aback upon learning from Gile that Adar is Hakan's mother and is destined for the Valley of Fire. Gile further explains that due to Adar being the mother of the Guardian Dragon, they cannot cast her into the flames, but rather imprison her there. Considering Adar's old age and weakened state, it is unlikely she will survive for long in such conditions. Lucina queries how they can assist Adar, prompting Gile to reveal that he knows a way to access the location. Urging Lucina, he convinces her that if she lends her aid, they can rescue Adair together. In Lucina's palace, Puka, taking the form of a bird, is astounded to hear Lucina's desire to enter the Valley of Fire. Shifting into an elf, Puka expresses disbelief, remarking that Lucina must have lost her senses. However, Lucina maintains her unwavering belief in herself, expressing gratitude for Puka's presence in that moment. Locking eyes with determination, she earnestly asks for Puka's assistance. Standing before the front gate of the Valley of Fire, guards keep a watchful eye on its entrance. Lucina, concealed behind the bushes alongside Puka, searches for a way to infiltrate the Forbidden Realm. Clutching the key provided by Gile, which unlocks Adara's prison door, Lucina patiently awaits the opportune moment to make her move. Earlier, Gile had explained his plan to incapacitate the guards, using his magic while confined to his chamber. Undeterred by the risks, Lucina summoned her courage to venture into the treacherous depths of the Valley of Fire. However, Puka, consumed by worry, expresses concern for Lucina's decision to expose herself to immense danger. Lucina explains that she cannot bear the thought of Adar perishing. Despite Puka's persistent pleas for her to retreat, Lucina's unwavering determination shines through as she clarifies that her motivations extend beyond saving Adar alone. Perplexed, Puka inquires about the true reason behind Lucina's resolute actions. Lucina remains silent, her thoughts consumed by the memory of Hakan's pained expression when he passed judgment on Adar. While still disappointed in Hakan for concealing the truth about her role as the dragon's bride, Lucina is driven by a deeper purpose. Enticing Puka with a pouch brimming with nuts, Lucina proposes a deal. If Puka aids her, he can enjoy these delectable treats every day. Unable to resist the temptation, Puka eagerly accepts the pouch, insisting that Lucina keeps her promise. With an awareness of the timing, Lucina knows that Gile will cast a sleeping spell on the guards at this specific moment. As the spell takes effect, the guards suddenly succumb to slumber, providing Lucina with the perfect opportunity to stealthily enter through the gate. Accompanied by Puka, who has transformed into a bird, Lucina ascends the stairs, determined to locate Adar's place of imprisonment. As she surveys the array of cage-like prisons, Lucina quickens her pace. The heat from the Valley of Fire causes beads of sweat to trickle down her face. Suddenly, Puka uses his feet to tug at Lucina's hair, attempting to convey a warning. It becomes apparent that a towering guardian of the Valley of Fire is present, fast asleep, clutching a bat. Realizing the urgency, Lucina instructs Puka to hasten their progress before the guardian awakens. 
Stealthily maneuvering past the slumbering giant guard, Lucina meticulously searches for Adder's prison. When she finally locates it, she dashes towards Adar's confinement, driven by the desire to set her free. The prison is designed like a cage, meant for one person, and there sits Adar, utterly defenseless, tightly embracing her doll. Without wasting another moment, Lucina promptly unlocks the prison door using the key Gelai had entrusted to her, freeing Adar from her confines, aided by Puka. Placing her hand on Adar's forehead, Lucina assesses her condition, noting that Adar has fainted and is battling a high fever. Moving swiftly, Lucina carries Adar on her back, with Puka lending support in pulling Adar along. Once they have distanced themselves from the scorching heat of the valley, and the air becomes less oppressive than within the prison, Lucina gently places Adar down and endeavors to awaken her. Turning to Puka, Lucina requests his assistance in giving Adar the water she had brought, as she intends to utilize her healing powers to help Adar recover. As previously explained by Gile, Adar's punishment entailed being confined in the Valley of Fire for a single day. If Adar could survive, she would emerge from the ordeal alive. With Lucina's healing powers, Gile held firm belief in Adar's ability to endure. Lucina begins casting her restorative magic on Adar, wondering why she has not yet awakened. However, their focus is abruptly interrupted when Puka reacts to the thunderous roar of the enormous guard approaching from behind. Lucina turns to find the giant guard standing there, seething with anger. Recalling Gile's earlier warning, Lucina remembers that the guard awakening signifies Gile's loss of consciousness. During that time, Gile had also provided her with a pouch of salt to be thrown into the guard's eyes as a last resort. Consumed by fury, the giant guard launches an attack on Lucina, but just in the nick of time, Puka employs his magic, casting a spell to release the restraining woodbine that had bound the giant guard. While Lucina frantically tries to retrieve the pouch of salt from her pocket, her exhaustion becomes overwhelming, leaving her feeling dizzy and disoriented. Regrettably, the giant guard manages to break free from the woodbine, striking Lucina and Puka with a forceful blow, causing the salt to scatter before they could employ it. Trembling and still reeling from the depletion of her powers, Lucina feels utterly helpless as she watches the giant guard's hand approach, poised to capture her. However, as she opens her eyes, she witnesses Hakan stepping in, intercepting the guard's attack with his bare hand. A look of fierce determination fills Hakan's face as he retaliates, leaving Lucina relieved, but perplexed as to why Hakan has appeared in this perilous moment. Hakan arrives just in the nick of time, and with his commanding authority, he directs the massive guard to return to its post. Complying with his master's instruction, the guard pivots and descends the staircase. Shifting his attention to Lucina, Hakan's expression evolves from anger to a mixture of concern and worry. He demands an explanation from Lucina about her presence there, underlining the audacity of her risking her life to aid a criminal. Despite struggling to discern Hakan clearly due to her condition, Lucina attempts to convey that Adair's demise would result in irreversible consequences, burdening Hakan with profound remorse. Regrettably, she is unable to conclude her explanation, her strength giving way, causing her to collapse. However, Hakan reacts swiftly, managing to catch her before she hits the ground. All of a sudden, Adar's awareness sharpens and she perceives Hakan as Lakan. Expressing her immense relief that Lakan has finally arrived. Approaching Hakan, Adar reaches out and touches his arm, remarking that she has been anticipating his arrival. Mistaking Hakan for Lakan, she then presents him with the doll she called Hoki. Adar urges Hakan to take Hoki and swiftly depart the location. Despite his bewilderment, Adair's urgency compels Hakan to act. She presses Hoki into his hands, stressing the increasing heat and danger within the Valley of Fire. 
Adder references Lakin's vow to always protect Hoki as a priority. At the sight of the doll in his grasp, a flood of memories rushes over Hakan. He reminisces about his youth when Adar personally crafted the doll for him, and they named it Hoki. During that time, young Hakan was brimming with joy, tightly embraced by Adar, who affectionately shared that Hoki was his nickname, even before his birth. Hakan trembles, his emotions entwined in a complex web. Adar, however, persists, urging him to depart swiftly, reassuring him that she can manage on her own. This way, he can lead Hoki and Lucina out of the perilous situation. She emphasizes that any harm befalling Hoki would render her incapable of carrying on. A plea for Hakan to safeguard his younger brother at any cost. Gazing at the Hoki doll in his grasp, Hakan acknowledges the fulfillment of the promise Lakin had made, and his tears begin to flow uncontrollably. Gradually regaining her composure, Adar recognizes that the person before her is indeed Hakan. Her words stumble out in an apology, confessing that her mind had become unhinged, preventing her from recognizing even her own son. Observing this poignant moment from a distance, Puka's anxiety gives way to relief, knowing that everyone is now safe. Meanwhile, within the Queen's palace, Garrett appears visibly displeased upon learning that Adar has been freed from the Valley of Fire. A servant relays the information that once Adair has made a complete recovery, she will take up residence in the Queen's palace. This news serves to further exacerbate Garrett's distress. As Lucina remains resting on her bed, Hakan remains steadfastly by her side, expressing gratitude for her actions that have shielded him from the depths of regret. The mere thought of Adar's potential demise due to his actions weighs heavily on Hakan's mind. He earnestly implores Lucina not to endanger her own life again, revealing that living without her would be akin to enduring a living hell. However, Lucina counters that she cannot heed that request. Despite her inner turmoil towards Hakan, she finds the sight of him suffering to be more agonizing. She boldly asserts her willingness to do anything, even if it entails sacrificing herself in order to safeguard Hakan. With conviction, she announces her intention to bear Hakan's child as a testament to her commitment. Hakan is taken aback by the suddenness of Lucina's declaration. Lucina then openly expressed her profound love for Hakan to the extent that she would willingly lay down her life for him. It was this very conviction that fortified her decision. Acting without a moment's doubt, she draws closer to Hakan and places a kiss on his lips. This action leaves him stunned, as Lucina persists in her embrace, prompting Hakan to suddenly attempt to halt her. He questions whether she genuinely comprehends the gravity of her declaration. In response, Lucina asserts her complete understanding of the matter, noting that the risk of maternal mortality during childbirth is a common concern. Given her healing abilities, she believes herself to be better equipped for the challenge compared to other women. With audacious resolve, she pushes Hakan onto the bed, rendering him momentarily speechless. Seating herself atop Hakan, Lucina's touch is gentle and affectionate. However, a change comes over Hakan, and he interrupts her advances. He rises and holds Lucina's arms, expressing that this is not a decision to rush into impulsively. He conveys that while Lucina might be prepared to confront the prospect of death, he is utterly unprepared to lose her. Even recalling the moment he found her in the Valley of Fire, the mere thought of her absence drives him to the brink of despair. Holding Lucina close, he implores her to prioritize her health and safety. His embrace an earnest plea. In the moment, Lucina contemplates whether to reveal her ability to Hakan, 
given that Gile is already privy to it. Despite her efforts to empathize with Hakan's concerns, she reiterates the necessity of a descendant from the Guardian Dragon's lineage. She also expresses her reluctance to have another woman bear Hakan's child. In response, Hakan proposes that Lucina undergo a comprehensive health assessment to ensure her well-being. He expresses concern due to her fainting episode the previous day and his reluctance to risk losing her again. Reflecting on this, Lucina finds herself wondering about her own condition. Despite possessing healing abilities, she recognizes her lack of knowledge about her own physical state. Given her recent experience of fainting after employing her powers to heal Adar, she considers the possibility that her body might not be as robust as she presumed. Upon considering this, Hakan summons the priest to examine Lucina's condition. The priest's assessment concludes that Lucina's weakness stems from inadequate nutrition and speculates that her childhood eating habits might have contributed. Lucina's concern becomes palpable, prompting Hakan to firmly grasp her shoulder and query whether an improvement in her eating habits could alleviate her condition. The priest, however, explains that he must analyze Lucina's energy to provide an accurate response. This analysis is necessary due to disparities between the Brian and Tayar people. Seeking permission to depart, the priest commits to informing Hakan as soon as he obtains the results of his examination. Nervously, Lucina calls out to Hakan, her voice trembling with anxiety. She admits her desire to share something with him and begins to speak hesitantly. The truth she reveals is that she is an illegitimate child, her true mother being a renowned prostitute in Brian, not Baroness Berg as previously claimed. She confides her fear that Hakan might call off their marriage upon learning this secret. She acknowledges her prior deception and offers a heartfelt apology. In response, Hakan tenderly lifts Lucina into his arms, assuring her that he will never abandon her unless she chooses to push him away. He expresses remorse for not disclosing the potential risks associated with birthing a child from the Dragon Tribe sooner, explaining that he was apprehensive about disappointing her. Drawing his face closer to Lucina's, he pleads for her forgiveness and promises a future of openness and honesty between them. Their kiss serves as the solemn seal of their renewed vows and commitments. Upon awakening, Adair's memory retraces the recent events, including the illusions that played out in her mind. It dawns on her that these experiences were likely the result of dark magic. In a state of urgency, she implores the guard to summon Hakan without delay, emphasizing her need to urgently alert him. Hakan explains to Lucina that his mother loved Lakin more than she loved him. He then blames himself for Lakin's death. However, deep down, Hakan understands that his mother suffers from immense guilt because Lakin died while protecting him as their mother had requested. Eventually, Hakan smiles and expresses his gratitude to Lucina for saving his mother. He believes that without Lucina's intervention, he would have lived in deep remorse. Suddenly, Lucina feels embarrassed and asks Hakan to let her down. Hakan reasons that due to her weakened body, as the priest had mentioned earlier, Lucina shouldn't push herself. Despite this, Lucina gives her best effort and mentions that it's all right, even if they're just walking, as she hasn't taken a single step today. Out of nowhere, a guard arrives with a radiant smile, informing Hakan that Adar has regained consciousness. As a result, they make their way to Adar's chamber. Upon seeing Adar asleep, Hawkins' expression becomes one of confusion. Unexpectedly, a sound from behind calls out to him, catching him off guard. It is Garrett, bearing a tray of medicines. She informs Hawkins that Adar fell asleep just moments ago. 
curious about his mother's condition. Huckin inquires with Garrett, while Lucina draws nearer to Adar's bedside. Garrett explains that it might take some time for Adar to make a full recovery. She also expresses her desire to take Adir to the Queen's palace and care for her there. In response, Lucina offers to look after Adar in her own palace. However, Garrett appears perturbed, explaining that it's a tradition for the Queen Mother to be attended to by the late Queen. She questions Lucina's knowledge of Tayer's laws, which she seems to lack despite having lived there for some time. Hacken steps in to address Garrett's query, suggesting that Lucina can gradually learn about Tyre, and that it's never too late. Annoyed, Hawken asserts that Garrett should show respect towards Lucina, as Lucina will be the one bearing Hak Khan's child. Despite her frustration, Garrett manages to force a smile, acknowledging that she understands. Turning his gentle gaze towards Lucina, Hakan assures her that he will provide her with a book about Tayar's culture and laws, and encourages her to ask any questions she might have. However, Lucina hesitates to respond due to her inability to read. While Hakan carries Lucina, guiding her back, she confides in him about her inability to read. Hakan reassures her, explaining that the book is not written in Tayar's language. However, their conversation is interrupted by the arrival of a guard who informs Hakan about a tribal meeting. Hakan requests permission to leave and gently sets Lucina down. As Hakan departs, Lucina's gaze shifts downward. Unexpectedly, a voice emerges from behind, inquiring about Lucina's troubled expression. It's Gile who approaches her. While seated, Lucina inquires about Gile's well-being. Amidst a bout of coughing, Gile manages to assure her that he's all right. He also expresses concern for Lucina regarding her fainting episode the previous day. Lucina explains that she is feeling better now, attributing her fainting to an excessive use of her healing power. Gile appears puzzled, as he had only recently learned about the side effects of such a divine power like Lucina's. Lucina herself is further perplexed, as she doesn't view her ability as a divine power. She recounts how, as a child, she discovered this ability after getting hurt. Whenever she wished to be relieved of pain, she would find herself healed. Lucina goes on to confide in Gile that she has kept this power a secret from others out of fear that they might exploit her. However, she holds on to the hope that by revealing her healing power to Hakan, he will provide her with protection. Gile acknowledges the genuine protection Hakan would offer Lucina. However, as he envisions a scenario where Lucina gives birth to Hakan's child and ascends to the throne, while Gile is coerced into practicing dark magic by Garrett, he believes that keeping Lucina's healing power a secret especially from Hawken, would be wise. He advises Lucina not to place too much trust in Hakan, leaving her perplexed. He raises the question of what might happen if Hakan were to choose between Lucina and the interests of Tayar. Jile assumes that for the sake of Tayar, Hakan might disregard Lucina's importance. Nonetheless, Lucina recalls Hakan's prior assurances, which reinforce her faith in him. Gile, however, continues his attempt to manipulate Lucina's thoughts, suggesting that Hakan might exploit her healing power. Lucina, viewing this as a positive aspect, remains undeterred, much to Gile's annoyance. He finds it hard to believe that Lucina is deeply in love with Hakan. Gile wonders whether, had he been the first to meet Lucina rather than Hakan, she might have fallen in love with him. As he indulges in this thought, Jile's face flushes red and his heartbeat quickens. Still, he persists in advising Lucina to keep her healing power a secret. Shifting the conversation, Jile inquires about the expression Lucina had earlier. 
She confides in him that Hakan plans to provide her with a book about Tayar, but she is unable to read. Lucina also shares her fear of admitting the truth, concerned that people might ridicule her. Recognizing an opening, Gile proposes to teach Lucina how to read. In Lucina's palace, Satiti is overcome with excitement. Upon learning that Lucina will be studying reading and writing under Gile's guidance. The prospect of having someone as brilliant as Gile as her teacher feels almost unbelievable to her. Lucina wears a puzzled expression, prompting Titi to elaborate further on Gile's accomplishments. She mentions how he managed to master the national language by the age of six and, by the time he turned 15, had achieved fluency in various scripts and languages from different kingdoms. Titidai emphasizes that there's no one else as intelligent as Gile, and she admits to feeling envious of Lucina's opportunity. Upon hearing this, Lucina asks if Titi also desires to learn. Titi explains that, due to family responsibilities, she hasn't had the chance to pursue learning. Nevertheless, Lucina persistently asks if Titi would like to learn alongside her, as she had already requested Gile to teach Titi as well. This revelation surprises Titi, but Lucina's smile reassures her that learning together could be more enjoyable than going alone. Titi's delight knows no bounds as she states her strong desire for this, expressing that serving Lucina is the most fulfilling thing she has ever done. She also extends her heartfelt gratitude to Lucina. Lucina experiences a sense of happiness seeing Titi's enthusiastic response. Deep in thought while walking, Gailai recalls the moment when Lucina expressed her eagerness to learn alongside him. Reflecting on it causes Gile to blush. For him, teaching reading and writing comes effortlessly. He also entertains the idea that by growing closer to Lucina, he might eventually have a chance to escape with her. Upon reaching the front door, Gile comes to a sudden halt. He is taken aback by the sight of Garrett welcoming him there, Adar resting on a bed nearby. Garrett proceeds to signal the servants to exit the room, leaving only the two of them. Gile stammers, questioning the reason for Ader's presence. With confidence, Anitz explains that the Queen Mother is to be attended to as per the tradition of the late Queen's service. Although Garrett's statement is valid, Gile raises a point of curiosity, asking why Garrett has chosen to adhere to this tradition after a decade has passed. Garrett's demeanor turns serious as she informs Gile that Adar has regained her senses. She explains that Adar spoke of the black magic that had caused chaos within the palace and insisted on summoning Hakan. Garrett realizes that the illusions created by Gile's black magic will gradually fade from people's memories. For those unaware of their situation, it might appear as if they had lost their minds and then fled. However, Adar's case is different. She managed to endure for the past decade without succumbing to this illusion. Garrett speculates that Adar possesses some level of resistance, allowing her to recall the actual events. This revelation fills Gile with fear, but Garrett offers reassurance by revealing her plan. She possesses a sedative that, when consumed, induces a deep sleep and clarifies the mind. She intends to administer this sedative to Adar through her food consistently, she subsequently resolves to cease employing black magic on Adar, opting instead to direct her efforts towards Lucina. Upon hearing this, Gillet promptly declines the proposal. However, Garrett probes his rationale, prompting Gillet to swiftly concoct a reason. He expresses concern that he's uncertain about the effects of his black magic on the people of Brian. He worries about the possibility of Lucina recalling the illusions he's crafted and then disclosing them to Hacken, a scenario he deems unsafe for them. Garrett takes Gile's explanation into consideration, which brings a sense of relief to Gile. Consequently, 
Garrett asserts that she must brainstorm an alternative approach. Following the tribal meeting, Hakan wears a concerned expression. Tehran inquires if something is amiss, prompting Hakan to voice his anxiety about his mother's well-being in the Queen's palace. Tehran explains that his initial concern had been Adair's insistence on remaining with Lakin's body. But she ultimately complied with Garrett's guidance without any trouble. Learning this, Hakan feels a sense of relief. Tehran goes on to share that Adair appears to be in better condition now, and he speculates that her previous mental distress might have been due to living in close proximity to Lakin's remains. Hakan then informs Tehran that the tribal meeting has decided to relocate Lakin's body to Mazarlik, following the birth of the guardian dragon. Tehran teases Hakan, remarking that this means Hakan should spend more time visiting Lucina's palace. Despite this, Haskins Kong's concern Lucina's well-being remains, leading him to consider waiting until he receives the results of Lucina's health assessment before making any hasty decisions. Abruptly, their conversation is interrupted by the arrival of the priest, who carries news that he needs to share with Hakan regarding Lucina. This information catches Hakan off guard. Meanwhile, Jilay is reviewing the assessment papers of Lucina and Titi. He praises Titi for her exceptional results, while acknowledging that Lucina still has much more to learn. Titi attempts to reassure Lucina, reminding her that this is her first experience with reading and writing. However, a sudden gust of wind sweeps through, causing the papers to scatter into the air. Lucina feels something enter her eye and attempts to rub it out. Jilay intervenes swiftly, preventing her and offering to assist by blowing away the debris from her eye. From a distance, Hakan observes Gile's close proximity to Lucina, igniting a surge of anger within him. Burning with anger, Hakan demands to know what Gilei and Lucina are up to. Startled by Hakan's voice, Lucina and Gilei turn toward him in shock. Hakan, still seething with rage, approaches them menacingly. Lucina and Gilei are gripped by fear as they remember the last time Hakan was furious with Gilei and had grabbed his collar. Determined to avoid a repeat of that situation, Lucina anxiously tries to explain what happened, but her words come out incoherent. Fortunately, Titi steps in as a translator, clarifying that there was dust in Lucina's eyes, and Gile had helped her remove it. Despite her struggles to explain, Lucina also stresses that there is nothing romantic between her and Gile. Desperate to make Hakan understand, Lucina grabs his robe and pulls herself closer, declaring her love for Hakan and pleading with him not to misunderstand the situation. Hearing her explanations clearly, Hakan finally relaxes and says he comprehends the situation. He initially thought Lucina couldn't understand Tayor's language, but now realizes she can't read at all. Hakan appreciates Lucina's effort to learn and commends her for finding a good teacher in Gile. Turning to Gile, Hakan requests that he teach Lucina and Titi to the best of his abilities, to which Gile agrees, estimating it will take one month. In a somewhat teasing tone, Hakan mentions Gile's lack of battlefield prowess but praises his intelligence, placing his trust in Gile as a teacher. As they shake hands, Hakan's demeanor turns serious as he warns Gile that he won't tolerate any inappropriate behavior towards Lucina. Releasing Gile's swollen hand, Hakan suggests wrapping up the lesson as evening approaches. He then carries Lucina and announces his intention to take her back to her palace. They leave Gile behind as they depart. On his way back, Gile can't help but feel a tinge of jealousy that Lucina chose Hakan over him. When he returns home, he is taken aback to find Garrett there. Meanwhile, Hakan informs Lucina of the results of her health assessment. He explains that she is simply lacking in nutrition and is weak, but should recover quickly. Lucina wonders if her healing power has contributed to her swift recovery. Hakan continues to elaborate, 
mentioning that her endurance and quick recovery will help her withstand the fire energy from him. However, he expresses concern for her well-being. Lucina reflects that despite her healing ability, her body may not be completely healthy. Hakan tells her that the priest will prepare a remedy to restore her energy, and they will monitor her progress. He explains that in two months' time, his period of prosperity is expected to begin, and he, too, will need to take the remedy to control his fire energy. Confused, Lucina asks about the period of prosperity, and Hakan explains that it's the time when the dragon race has the highest chance of having descendants, due to the increased aura of fire. He gently touches Lucina's face and advises her to assess her health after two months to proceed to the next step. As Hakan prepares to leave, Lucina suddenly grabs his robe and asks if they can sleep together. Hakan blushes deeply at the request. Lucina clarifies that she doesn't want to sleep alone for the next two months and simply wishes to have him by her side at night. She emphasizes that it's just about sleeping together. Reluctantly, Hakan agrees. And they find themselves on Hakan's bed, with Lucina overjoyed to have him close. However, Hakan can't help but feel frustrated. Lucina then timidly requests if she can hold Hakan's hand while they sleep, and, blushing, asks if they can share a kiss emphasizing that it will be just a kiss. Before Hakan can respond, Lucina leans in closer and Hakan struggles to control his desire. And so, they share a passionate kiss. But suddenly, Hakan, overwhelmed by desire, pins Lucina down. He gently strokes her hair, but quickly regains his composure. Stepping back, he acknowledges that what they did was wrong. Maintaining a safe distance, Hawkins suggests that they should sleep in separate rooms, his face blushing. He insists it's the best course of action for them at the moment. Hakan also mentions that kissing is prohibited during the next two months. Lucina can't help but ask why, to which Hakan explains that he won't be able to control himself if they continue to kiss. Lucina, still hopeful, suggests they could at least hold hands but Hakan firmly states that they should not sleep in the same room. Disheartened, Lucina questions if, for the next two months, they will simply stare at each other, to which Hakan reluctantly confirms, saying it's the only way to ensure their safety. Hearing this, Lucina can't hold back her tears and asks Hakan why he decided this now, after they had held hands and kissed, which he seemed to accept. Frustrated, Hakan suggests that Lucina tie his hands if she wants. He hands her a band and instructs her to tie his hands so she can do as she pleases. However, Lucina finishes tying Hakan's hands. Hakan then tells her that she can do whatever she wishes. Slowly, she draws her face closer to Hakan's, as if she's about to kiss him. Meanwhile, in Gile's room, Garrett, who has been waiting for him, urges Gile to use black magic on Hakan. Garrett argues that despite Hakan being a dragon and a great king, he is also a tire and thus susceptible to black magic. Gile tries to remind her of the dangers of using black magic on a king and the risk of discovery. However, Garrett views the period of prosperity as their opportunity, as it signifies an increase in violence. She suggests that if Hakan's spouse were to disappear in an unfortunate accident, the elders would advise him to remarry her. Garrett insists that Gile perform the black magic, with the target being to make Hakan accidentally kill Lucina. Though Gile is trembling and refuses, Garrett promises him that it will be the last time, and afterward he can live as he pleases. Reluctantly, Gile begins to prepare the ritual for the black magic. Back in Hawkins' room, Lucina continues to kiss him, noticing his rapidly beating heart. Lucina decides to stop, but Hacken suddenly declares that he can't hold back any longer. In an instant, he frees himself from the band on her hands and pins Lucina down on the bed, leaving her bewildered. With his face all flushed, Hawkins gazes at Lucina, struggling to contain himself. 
but he regains his composure and, pulling away from Lucina, realizes that things shouldn't go any further. He swiftly turns around and shouts to his guards to fetch the unbreakable chain used for the guardian dragon. Lucina can't help but burst into laughter, surprising Hakan, who can't believe she's still able to find humor in such a precarious situation. In Gile's chamber, he reluctantly readies himself for the black magic ritual, his thoughts occupied with a secret plan. Garrett notices his hesitance and inquires about his intentions. Gile is reluctant to resort to black magic when Hakan is with Lucina, fearing it could endanger her, so he contemplates an alternative approach to ensure Lucina's safety. He then explains that if he were to simulate a heart attack and faint, the magic would be dispelled. By repeating this act, Hakan would become as alert as a deer. Garrett remains puzzled, asking what the purpose of this plan is. Rising to his feet, Gile declares that he will modify the magic equipment and retrieves a bundle of candles. He explains that these candles are crafted from his own blood, and if he uses them, the magic's effect will persist, even if he loses consciousness due to a heart attack. Garrett questions why he didn't suggest this earlier. Gile leans in closer and whispers something to her, prompting a pleased reaction from Garrett after hearing Gile's explanation. The following day, Lucina engages in a conversation with Puka, reflecting on the previous night when she used a chain to ensure Hakan slept peacefully. This revelation prompts Puka to burst into laughter. Puka then broaches the topic of whether Hakan and Lucina will indeed abstain from intimacy for two months, reminding Lucina of her desire to bear Hakan's child. Lucina explains that Hakan advised her to strengthen her body first because, despite her healing powers, she still lacks physical strength. Hearing this explanation, Puka offers his perspective, suggesting that it might be the earth energy within her body that weakens her. In a counterintuitive twist, having a child with Hakan might actually restore her energy. Usina still struggles to fully grasp what Puka is trying to convey. Puka adds that a child imbued with the energy of fire could potentially stabilize her energy, and even if there were issues with nutrition, as long as she ate enough, there should be no problem. Lucina's comprehension dawns, and she suddenly becomes excited at the prospect, leaving Puka visibly shocked by her reaction. Seeking reassurance, Lucina inquires about the potential dangers of carrying a dragon's child. Puka clarifies that while it may pose risks for the average person, it should be perfectly safe for her. He goes on to explain that during pregnancy, she won't be able to utilize her healing powers, as they will automatically be directed toward protecting her from the fire energy emanating from the child in her womb. Puka then raises a critical question. Even if she loses her ability to heal, is she still willing to have a child with Hakan? Lucina follows up by asking if her healing powers will return once the child is born. Puka confidently responds with a resounding yes. Lucina can't help but exclaim why Puka didn't share this information with her earlier, despite never explicitly asking him about it. Lucina excitedly departs from her room, eager to share the news with Hakan that she no longer needs to rely on pills and waiting as her healing powers now ensure a safe pregnancy, alleviating Hakan's concerns. Inside Hakan's chamber, the servants deliver the remedy from the priest as planned. Noticing that the servant has brought something else along, Hakan inquires about it. The servant explains that Tehran suggested decorating the room, given Lucina's frequent visits, so she brought scented candles and flowers. Hakan responds with a smile, even acknowledging that Tehran's ideas can prove useful at times. With that settled, Hakan proceeds to take his remedy, while another servant arranges the flowers and candles neatly on the table. As he sips the potion designed to suppress his fire energy, Hakan reflects on how he should find today a bit more bearable than yesterday. Once the servants depart, Hakan gazes at the flowers, taking in their fragrance, and wonders if Lucina will appreciate the thoughtful gesture. Lucina arrives at Hakan's chamber, 
and the guards promptly inform Hakan of her presence. As Lucina steps into Hakan's chamber, her face lights up with joy. She approaches Hakan, eager to share her news. However, Hakan stands there with an unusual expression, and suddenly, he roughly seizes Lucina's hand, causing her pain. This prompts Lucina to call out his name in bewilderment. Without uttering a word, Hakan then pulls Lucina closer and firmly grasps her waist. As Hakan withdraws his hand from Lucina, he gazes at the shattered accessories on his hand. An unusual sensation coursing through him. His expression wrestles with inner turmoil as he grapples with what's happening to him. Lucina becomes alarmed by Hakan's abrupt response, her fear evident in her expression. Observing Lucina's reaction, Hakan is caught off guard and quickly apologizes, explaining that he's not feeling well today, and suggests that she should retire to her palace for the night. Unbeknownst to him, the black magic from Gile's candle is taking its toll. Even Hakan himself struggles to comprehend why he acted so harshly toward Lucina, leading him to ponder whether the fire energy within him is intensifying, despite it being two months early. Returning to her palace, Lucina finds herself in her chamber, lying in her bed, and contemplates the recent unsettling encounter with Hakan. She's puzzled by Hakan's uncharacteristic behavior, which left her feeling frightened. Unable to sleep due to her lingering thoughts, Titi suggests that she try immersing herself in holy water to find some solace and ease her restlessness. Lucina decides to follow Titi's advice and ventures to the holy water. After immersing herself in the calming waters, Lucina emerges, feeling rejuvenated. She even playfully showcases her swimming skills to Titi. On the other side of the holy water, Hakan arrives with the hope that submerging himself in it might help calm his inner turmoil. However, he pauses upon hearing Lucina's voice echoing nearby. Turning in the direction of the sound, he's greeted by the sight of Lucina wearing a radiant smile while Titi assists her in drying her hair. The image captivates Hakan, and he can't help but be entranced by the beauty of Lucina's joyful expression. Yet, his demeanor suddenly shifts, influenced by the black magic being cast by Gilai from a distant location. While casting the magic spell, Gile provides an explanation of his black magic's workings. He clarifies that his black magic can only conjure illusions as long as he maintains the incantation. When he loses consciousness, those under its influence will snap out of it. Gile further elucidates that by combining the spell with the candle, the affected person will perceive illusions whenever they sense someone's love. Initially, these illusions are brief and easily overcome, but over time, they grow more potent and challenging to distinguish from reality. At the moment, Hakan is ensnared in an illusion featuring Lucina and Gile, which stokes the fires of his anger. In a burst of rage, he approaches Lucina menacingly. Lucina is taken aback by Hakan's sudden presence, but as their eyes meet, Something within Hakan snaps him back to reality. He comes to a sudden halt, visibly shocked. Lucina, trembling with concern, asks if Hakan is all right or if he's been hurt. Even Titi hides herself behind a pillar, sensing the tension. Hakan attempts to explain that he thought Lucina had fallen, prompting his hasty arrival. Seeing something amiss with Hakan, Lucina presses further, inquiring about his well-being. Hakan, however, avoids her gaze and claims that he's merely a little exhausted, assuring her that the holy water will help him recover. Recalling that she has something important to share with Hakan, Lucina attempts to broach the subject. However, Hakan abruptly turns his back to her, remarking that it's late and instructing her to retire for the night. He then directs Titi to escort Lucina back to her palace, leaving her perplexed by his sudden behavior. Even Hakan himself is left feeling unsettled, as he continues to experience inexplicable anger in Lucina's presence. He begins to wonder if he's losing his sanity. Meanwhile, Jilai, still immersed in his black magic, elaborates on the lasting effects of the spell. 
He explains that the emotions it generates will persist even after the illusion has dissipated, gradually nurturing negative sentiments within Hakan towards Lucina. Jile asserts that there's no need to physically harm Lucina, as Hakan will naturally distance himself from her. Jile believes that this approach won't harm Lucina physically, but will gradually erode her relationship with Hakan. He speculates that Lucina will eventually grow disillusioned and leave the palace, seeking him out to depart together. Seeking answers and troubled by his own behavior, Hakan decides to consult with the priest, sharing his concerns about the strange changes he's experiencing. The following day, Lucina and Titi are engrossed in their lessons with Gile as their teacher. However, Lucina appears to be lost in thought, her mind drifting away. Gile repeatedly calls her name, and when she finally snaps back to reality, she's taken aback. Concerned, Gile instructs Titi to retrieve another book from the library and seizes the opportunity to speak with Lucina privately. He inquires about what's been bothering her, expressing his worry and asking if something has transpired between Lucina and Hakan. Lucina's eyes well up with tears as she struggles to hold back her emotions. Observing her distress, Gile asks if Hakan has been angry with her, or if he has mistreated her in any way. Lucina, with a sorrowful expression, reassures Gile that it's not the case. Instead, she reveals that Hakan has been consistently in a foul mood lately. Gile experiences a wave of relief that Hakan hasn't physically harmed Lucina. However, he attempts to empathize with Lucina by suggesting that Hakan's behavior can be erratic, akin to that of a child. Lucina, however, becomes defensive, fiercely protecting her beloved's honor. She asserts that Hakan's recent mood swings are a result of the approaching period of prosperity, during which he doesn't feel an optimal condition, affecting his temperament. Jile then proposes that Lucina take a break from seeing Hakan for a while. Lucina hesitates, concerned about missing him. Jile pauses for a moment and then suggests that she write a letter to Hakan as an alternative means of communication allowing them to stay in touch without meeting face to face. Lucina's face instantly brightens with enthusiasm at the prospect of writing a letter to Hakan. Upon completing the letter, Lucina requests Gile's assistance in reviewing it. However, as Gile reads the letter, he appears somewhat taken aback. He carefully rolls up the letter and assures Lucina that it's perfectly fine, offering praise for her effort and telling her that she's done an excellent job. Lucina is elated to hear his words, particularly when Gila adds that Hakan will appreciate it. She holds hope that Hakan will be pleased when he receives her letter. In Hakan's chamber, the priest arrives to assess his condition. He reassures Hakan that his instability is merely a result of the approaching period of prosperity and poses no life-threatening danger. Still, Hakan seeks further clarification, prompting the priest to elaborate. He explains that as the flame's intensity grows stronger, it becomes increasingly challenging to control one's emotions, particularly when harboring special feelings for someone. This is a common experience for everyone. Hakan acknowledges the priest's explanation and grants him permission to depart. As the priest exits Hakan's chamber, a servant enters, bearing a letter from Lucina. Hakan accepts the letter with curiosity, wondering about its contents. The servant inquires whether she should light a candle. He grants permission for the candle to be lit. As Hakan begins to peruse Lucina's letter, he becomes perplexed by the jumbled words and phrases she has penned, finding the writing somewhat amusing. He even shares a laugh at her unconventional style. However, as he continues to read, the insidious effects of the black magic emanating from the candle start to take hold, further distorting the words on the page and transforming the once-loving letter into one filled with hatred. With each passing moment, the illusions envelop Hakan more tightly, making it increasingly difficult to resist. Finally, unable to contain his growing agitation, Hakan lets out a loud, exasperated shout to quell the turmoil within. 
This sudden outburst prompts the guards stationed outside his chamber to rush in, expressing concern for Hawkins' well-being. Trembling and visibly distressed, Hawkins discovers that the letter has been torn to shreds, leaving him bewildered upon returning to reality. Upon seeing the letter in tatters on the floor, the guard wonders if there was something awry with the letter. Hacken then picks up the torn pieces of paper, pondering why he had reacted so strongly in anger. The news of Hacken's anger upon receiving Lucina's letter quickly circulates among the servants, leading them to assume that Lucina has penned something that has ignited Hakan's fury. Titi, who happens to be nearby and overhears the gossip, is taken aback by the revelation, particularly because she is aware that Lucina had sought Gile's assistance in composing the letter. A day later, Titi rushes toward Gile, her expression angry and agitated. Gile inquires about the reason for her urgency, noting that it's not yet time for their study session. Titi insists that he speak with her before Lucina arrives, so Gile leads her to a secluded spot and asks her to explain what has transpired. Still carrying an air of frustration, Titi confronts Gile, demanding to know what he did. Gile is momentarily stunned, his mind racing with thoughts about whether Titi has discovered his use of black magic. However, Titi continues, revealing that Hakan became angry while reading the letter from Lucina. Hearing this, Gile breathes a sigh of relief realizing that the issue pertains to the letter itself. Titi questions why Gilai didn't inform Lucina when she wrote something unconventional, and he explains that while there were indeed some spelling mistakes, the content of the letter was entirely sound. Gile further elaborates that he believed Hakan would be deeply moved by receiving such a heartfelt letter, imperfections and all, and thus saw no need to make corrections. T.D. then speculates whether Hawkins' anger stemmed from Lucina's lack of writing skills. While Gile wonders if his black magic might have influenced the letter in some way. To their surprise, Lucina suddenly emerges from behind, wearing a sorrowful expression as she addresses them, revealing that Hacken became angry when reading her letter. In a state of panic, T.D. questions why Lucina ventured there alone, to which Lucina explains that she couldn't locate Titi, prompting her to come looking for them. Her countenance grows even more despondent as she speculates on why Hakan might have become upset over her subpar writing skills. Titi promptly reassures Lucina, insisting that her assessment is mistaken and emphasizing that Hakan is not the type to react that way. Gile joins Titi in comforting Lucina, offering his agreement with Titi's words. In that moment, Lucina begins to believe that there might be a misunderstanding, as she places her trust in Hakan. Gilai, however, ponders the reason behind his agreement. Given that his ultimate goal is to sow doubt between Lucina and Hakan, hoping that Lucina will turn to him instead, he wonders if it's because he genuinely doesn't want to see Lucina hurt. Out of the blue, Lucina announces her intention to speak with Hakan. Gile is suddenly filled with worry, expressing concerns about whether it's a good idea given Hakan's perpetually foul mood of late. Lucina, however, remains resolute, asserting that she's determined to talk to him because she has something important to convey. Titi lends her support to Lucina's decision, encouraging her to engage with Hakan and clear up any misunderstandings between them. Just as Lucina is about to depart, Gilai unexpectedly seizes her hand, preventing her from leaving. Lucina turns to him, puzzled by his actions. In a nervous tone, Gilai reminds Lucina that they have their study session scheduled for today. Lucina hesitates for a moment, torn between her desire to speak with Hakan and her commitment to her studies. Titi steps in to reassure Lucina, promising to tutor her after her conversation with Hakan and urging her not to worry. Gile, feeling helpless, understands that there's little more he can do to dissuade Lucina. Lucina expresses her gratitude to Titi, and then rushes off to Hakan's palace. Watching her depart, Gile begins to contemplate the need to follow her. In his chamber, Hakan finds himself pondering recent events. 
Despite the looming period of prosperity, he's been feeling unlike himself lately. He recalls losing his temper, but the reason behind it eludes him. Frustrated and seeking answers, Hakan decides to discontinue his remedy, suspecting it might be the cause. Yet the problem persists. His frustration grows as he grapples with the mystery. Suddenly, a memory sparks in his mind, the servant who had delivered the candle. Hakan jumps to his feet and begins to pace as he tries to piece together the puzzle. He remembers reading Lucina's letter with the candle nearby and starts to wonder if there's something amiss with it. Just as he steps out of his chamber, he encounters Lucina rushing toward him. Surprised, Hakan inquires about her presence. Lucina then reveals that she has something important to share with him. Quickly scanning their surroundings, she leans closer to Hakan and suggests that they move inside. Lucina believes it's best to keep her healing ability a secret from anyone else. Hakan, sensing the urgency, agrees to follow Lucina. Now in Hakan's chamber, they sit together near the table with the scented candle still lit. Hakan then tells Lucina to speak her mind, and she nervously begins to voice her concerns. She mentions her worry about Hakan's recent bad mood and his need to take the remedy due to the impending period of prosperity. Gathering her courage, Lucina makes a heartfelt plea for Hakan to cease taking the remedy, revealing her own healing ability and assuring him that there's no need for concern. However, Hakan's response leaves Lucina bewildered. He remains silent, but something appears to be stirring in his mind upon hearing about Lucina's healing ability. Observing Hakan's expression, Lucina hesitantly inquires why he appears that way. Unfortunately, Hakan's thoughts are ensnared by the dark magic manipulated by Garrett through Gile. All he can discern now is Lucina apparently confiding in Gile. Hakan's frustration mounts, and he accuses Lucina of treachery and deception. Lucina, upon hearing this, is both perplexed and fearful. While attempting to calm Hakan, her words falter, but her efforts yield no success. The dark magic further exacerbates Hakan's anger, and he now envisions Lucina alongside Gile. With an abrupt movement, Hakan rises, teetering on the brink of attacking Lucina. Outside Hakan's chamber, Gilai appears concerned as he approaches. However, Lucina's scream suddenly startles Gile and the guards. Gile rushes into Hakan's chamber to find Lucina lying on the ground. He promptly instructs a guard to summon assistance. Turning to Lucina, he inquires about her well-being. Lucina appears terrified and conveys to Gile her concerns about Hakan's unusual behavior. Gile, on the other hand, explains that Hakan's aggressive tendencies can surface during periods of prosperity and advises Lucina to keep her distance. Nevertheless, Lucina worries that Hakan may pose a threat to others and expresses a desire to use her healing powers to aid him. Gilai, however, holds a different perspective. Believing it's too risky for Lucina to use her powers in Hakan's current state, despite their potential effectiveness. Out of the blue, Hakan, still ensnared by the dark magic's influence, erupts in rage and seizes Gile by the collar. Fearing for the safety of others, Lucina utilizes her restorative abilities while attempting to bring Hakan back to his senses. She persists in channeling her healing powers toward Hakan gradually guiding him back to a state of bewildered clarity. Lucina finally perceives that Hakan is regaining his composure, which provides her with relief. However, having expended a significant amount of energy, she succumbs to unconsciousness due to her depleted power. A worried expression crosses Hakan's face as he ponders what transpired and contemplates Lucina's role in helping him. The servant and the priest eventually arrive, but one of the attendants raises suspicions. Hakan notifies the priest of his intention to accompany Lucina to her room and instructs the priest to attend to Gile instead. After Hakan and Lucina have exited the room, the dubious servant discreetly dispatches a message using a carrier pigeon. Subsequently, the priest delivers his findings to Hakan, confirming the presence of dark magic within the candles. Hakan also inquires about Lucina's well-being 
prompting the priest to inform him that Lucina has sustained a bruise. Overwhelmed by guilt, Hakan makes his way to Lucina's chamber to assess her condition. Inside, Titi apprises him that Lucina remains unconscious, but offers reassurance, suggesting that Lucina would likely be deeply comforted by his presence when she regains consciousness. Observing Lucina still lying motionless on the bed, Hakan is overwhelmed with guilt, comprehending the role he played while under the dark magic's influence, leading to Lucina's harm. Hakan earnestly implores Lucina to awaken, his heart heavy with the desire to offer her a heartfelt apology. However, a sudden commotion erupts as the guards rush into the chamber in a state of panic, urgently conveying to Hakan that the dragon's hatching fortress is under attack. Earlier, inside Garrett's palace, her servant arrived with a report stating that Hakan had found the candle and disposed of it. The servant expressed concern about the risk of exposure, but Garrett remained composed and put forth a plan. Garrett suggested that they should devise a strategy to ensure Hakan's temporary absence from the palace, enabling them to frame Lucina for the incident. Hurriedly making his way to the fortress, Hakan's anger burns fiercely. He hasn't had a chance to tend to Lucina, but the sudden attack by the Dragon Slayers demands his immediate attention. The last time the castle's defenses were breached was a decade ago, resulting in significant damage and the loss of Hakan's own brother in that conflict. Hakan is resolute in his determination to confront and defeat the Dragon Slayers, seeking revenge for the tragic events of the past. Upon their arrival, Hakan inquires about the situation from the guard, who reports that there have been no major attacks except for the breach of the barrier. Hakan is taken aback by this revelation, initially thinking the situation was urgent. However, he begins to contemplate whether the attack was deliberately orchestrated to lure him there. With a sense of caution, Hakan orders his troops to return to the palace, firmly believing that they've fallen into a trap meant to draw him out. As they prepare to depart, the dragon slayer who had been involved in the previous attack suddenly appears. Battle ensues, but unfortunately, Hakan is struck by a black arrow wielded by the dragon slayer leader. Inside the palace, Lucina awakens and anxiously inquires about Hakan's whereabouts from Titi. Titi explains that Hakan had been with Lucina when she was unconscious, but he had to rush to defend the castle during an attack. Upon hearing this, Lucina hurries out of her room to search for Hakan. Tehran and the others arrive on horseback, their expressions somber. Lucina approaches Tehran and queries him about Hakan's condition. Tehran informs her that Hakan sustained serious injuries and that he's on his way to see Hakan. Learning of Hakan's peril, Lucina's worry becomes evident. She then informs Tehran that she intends to visit Hakan, stating that she can heal Hakan. Tehran consents to escort Lucina to see Hakan. However, another guard interjects, emphasizing the need for permission to enter, even for Lucina. Tehran counters, asserting that Lucina will soon become Teo's official queen, and no one else is more qualified to assess Hakan's health. With this, Lucina rides alongside Tehran to the location where Hakan is convalescing, a significant cave protected by dragons one of Teyar's many sacred sites. Tehran elucidates that this place holds the utmost sanctity, serving as the birthplace of all previous Teyar kings. As Lucina readies herself to enter the cave, Tehran offers a word of caution, emphasizing the absence of light within. Lucina inquires if Tehran will accompany her, but he explains that he cannot enter voluntarily. Lucina takes a moment to contemplate the situation, noting Tehran's faith in her, even if he cannot enter the cave himself. Expressing her gratitude, Lucina thanks Tehran before proceeding into the cave. Unbeknownst to her, Tehran forgets to convey that Hakan is in his true form, hoping that Lucina won't be taken aback. With unwavering determination to heal Hakan, Lucina steps into the dark cave. As she delves deeper, she senses a warmth that strikes her as oddly familiar, this energy draws her in, and she decides to follow it, believing it may lead her to Hakan. However, 
As she reaches the source of the warmth, she is surprised to find not Hakan, but a wounded dragon. Lucina cautiously approaches, recognizing the dragon from her childhood. The dragon opens its eyes upon her approach, and without hesitation, Lucina inquires if the dragon remembers their encounter from ten years ago. She also asks if the dragon is the guardian of the cave. The dragon Hakan, in his true form, is puzzled by Lucina's statement that they had met a decade ago. Lucina then discloses her purpose in seeking her husband. However, upon noticing the dragon's injury, Lucina extends her hand, offering to heal it. At that moment, Hakan finally recognizes Lucina as the girl who had healed him a decade ago. Unable to believe that he hadn't realized her identity, despite her constant presence by his side, the dragon turns to reveal its wound to Lucina. And without hesitation, she employs her healing abilities to mend the dragon's injury. Suddenly, the dragon undergoes a transformation, shifting into Hakan's human form. Lucina, baffled by the sudden disappearance of the dragon and the emergence of Hakan, searches around in perplexity. Without delay, Hakan embraces Lucina, expressing his gratitude for her salvation, just as she had done for him ten years earlier. Lucina seeks confirmation, asking if the dragon was indeed Hakan. Hakan affirms this, acknowledging that Lucina has saved his life on two occasions. He carries a heavy burden of remorse for his actions under the dark magic's influence and the harm he had intended to cause Lucina. As Lucina comprehends the circumstances that led to Hakan's past actions, she finds relief, understanding that it wasn't his true will. Acknowledging the dragon as Hakan, Lucina begins to feel a sense of relaxation. With a cheerful disposition, she reassures Hakan that she is all right. Recognizing that being under the spell is not something he could control, she notes the synchronicity in their connection stating that healing Hakan again, much like ten years ago, seems like fate intertwining their lives. Lucina expresses her happiness in being the one to save Hakan once more. Lucina reiterates her special gift, explaining that her healing abilities will ensure a safe childbirth for their child, relieving Hakan of any further worry or suffering on her behalf. Overjoyed, Hakan expresses his happiness with a passionate kiss on Lucina's lips. After a while of waiting outside, Tehran spots Hakan carrying Lucina, and both appear to be in perfect health. Tehran's face lights up with joy as he comprehends that Lucina possesses healing abilities. Hakan, still holding Lucina, instructs Tehran to prepare his room as soon as they return to the palace. Confused by Hakan's request, Tehran seeks clarification. Hakan, gazing at Lucina, elaborates on their plans to engage in something they were unable to do before. Initially puzzled, Lucina's face flushes with embarrassment as she grasps the meaning behind Hakan's words. In Lucina's chamber, Titty is surprised to discover that Lucina and Hakan never had their first night together. Lucina confides that she was intoxicated during that time. Lucina proceeds to alleviate Titi's concerns assuring her that she won't die even if she bypasses her first night. Feeling reassured, Tidai now becomes enthusiastic about transforming Lucina into the most resplendent lady in the entire palace. After completing the preparations, Lucina is now prepared to make her way to Hakan's chamber. Lucina proceeds to enter Hakan's chamber, finding him already there, seated on his bed, waiting for her. As she approaches Hakan, her nerves are palpable. He pulls her closer, seating her on his lap, and playfully inquires if she's feeling shy. Hakan expresses his concern about potentially hurting Lucina, but she reassures him once more, reminding him of her healing ability. This reassurance prompts Hakan to burst into laughter as he teases Lucina. Hakan gently places Lucina on his bed and draws his face nearer to hers, bestowing a soft kiss on her lips. As their lips part, Lucina inquires about Hakan's ability to have children, even when he's not in his period of prosperity. Between kisses, Hakan assures her that he can, explaining that the period of prosperity 
merely heightens the chances of conceiving. Hakan once more asks Lucina if she's comfortable proceeding further. With a radiant smile, Lucina affirms her readiness. With their mutual agreement, Hakan continues their first night together. The next morning, when Turan and Titi see Hakan carrying Lucina out of the chamber, they are filled with joy, particularly upon learning that Lucina is in good health. Turan inquires about Hakan's destination, and Hakan explains that they are heading to the hot springs, considering that Lucina's body must be weary. Hearing Hakan's teasing words, Lucina's face turns crimson with embarrassment. Shyly, Lucina tells Hakan that he should be the one saying that, which elicits laughter from those around. As Turan watches Hakan depart with Lucina, he experiences a sense of relief, knowing that Lucina is by Hakan's side. He is particularly heartened by the sight of Hakan's smile, a sight he had never witnessed before. The news of Hakan and Lucina's first night quickly reaches Garrett's ears, and her displeasure is evident. Learning that Lucina is perfectly fine after that night only serves to intensify Garrett's anger, and she harbors a sinister wish for Lucina's demise. To carry out her malevolent intentions, Garrett devises a plan to use black magic on Hakan once more. She dismisses her servants, instructing them to leave so she can contemplate her next steps. After they depart from Garrett's palace, one of the servants discreetly sends a message via a carrier pigeon. Deep within the forest, the message reaches the intended recipient, a member of the Dragon Slayers. Upon reading the message, the Dragon Slayer removes her helmet, revealing her face as that of a woman with silver eyes and long blonde hair. She acknowledges that it won't be long before her plan can come to fruition. In Lucina's palace, Hakan divulges the details about the dark candle, explaining how it had caused him to behave strangely due to an unusual spell within. He queries Lucina about her familiarity with such objects, as he had never encountered anything similar in Tayar before. Lucina, concerned by the revelation, admits that she has never come across the practice of casting spells on candles in Brian either. Observing her worry, Hakan provides reassurance, informing her that the person responsible for bringing the candle has been apprehended, though they have yet to identify the creator. While Hakan contemplates the potential involvement of Garrett, he acknowledges the difficulty in accusing her, given her apparent incapability of wielding dark magic. Hakan elucidates to Lucina that, based on the priest's insights, the use of dark magic can have severe consequences, such as the destruction of a person's soul and adverse effects on their entire body. As a result, he intends to investigate individuals who have exhibited sudden changes in their physical well-being. He advises Lucina to take some time to rest and not dwell on these concerns. After absorbing Hakan's explanation, Lucina contemplates whether Jile might be unwell due to his use of dark magic, though she sincerely hopes that is not the case. All Lucina knows is that Gile has endured chest pain since childhood and has always taken care of her, leading her to doubt that he would intentionally cause harm. In Gile's residence, Garrett attempts to intimidate him into using dark magic once more. However, Gile stands firm, declaring that he refuses to employ dark magic any longer. He mentions that Hakan has already taken Lucina and this situation could also put Garrett in danger. It becomes apparent that Garrett is aware of Gile's concerns for Lucina's safety. Although Garrett is visibly displeased, she recognizes that she cannot coerce Gile any further and allows him to leave. As Garrett departs, Gile is left pondering Garrett's true intentions. A week later, with Hakan gently cradling her in his arms, Lucina observes a scar on Hakan's face. He offers reassurance, mentioning that it will heal quickly. Lucina, wanting to help, offers to use her healing abilities. However, a sudden recollection of what Puka had told her surfaces, she won't be able to utilize her healing powers during her pregnancy because her body requires them to protect her from the fiery energy of the child. Inside their chamber, 
The priest has been summoned to examine Lucina. He exuberantly congratulates her on the news of her pregnancy with the dragon's child. Upon hearing this, Lucina is filled with happiness at the prospect of bearing Hakan's child. The priest advises her to exercise additional caution with her body, emphasizing that even the slightest oversight could lead to severe complications. Hakan tenderly embraces Lucina, overwhelmed with joy that she's now carrying his child. With a gentle look in his eyes, he asks Lucina what she desires, perhaps expecting her to request gold or jewels. However, Lucina surprises him with a different wish. In the garden, Hakan is taken aback by Lucina's simple request for fruits. Lucina's rationale is that she believes if she asks for anything more extravagant, Hakan would provide her with mountains of it. So she's content with just fruit. Hakan tenderly expresses his love for Lucina by feeding her the fruits. Unbeknownst to them, Puka is discreetly observing from a nearby tree. Upon her return to her chamber, Puka can hardly believe what he witnessed, Hakan's sudden change in behavior. Lucina, however, insists that Hakan has always been exceptionally kind. Puka, ever cautious, reminds Lucina that she must exercise care since neither she nor Hakan can heal from serious injuries now. Nonetheless, Lucina's primary concern is Hakan's safety in battle. Puka suggests seeking help from someone with abilities similar to Lucina's. This idea resonates with Lucina, and she surprises Puka by declaring her agreement. She believes that enlisting the Cameron's assistance might not only ensure her own safety, but also Hakan's and the safety of Tayar as a whole. Lucina approaches Hakan to discuss her plan, but Hakan initially expresses his disagreement. He explains that Tayar has been branded as barbaric by neighboring kingdoms and believes they are unlikely to extend assistance. However, Lucina remains steadfast in her determination to try. And eventually, Hakan concedes, though he can't guarantee the outcome. He agrees to send a letter to the Cameron. Lucina is overjoyed that Hakan is willing to consider her suggestion. Lucina sets about composing the letter with Hakan's guidance. He playfully teases her, remarking that her writing skills have improved considerably since before. Lucina counters by accusing Hakan of implying that she used to be terrible at writing. Not wanting to upset Lucina, Hakan assures her that it's not what he meant. As Lucina concentrates on writing the letter, she is seated on Hakan's lap. He leans in closer, observing how beautiful she appears when she's focused. Showering Lucina with kisses, Hakan suggests they complete the letter and spend some quality time together. Lucina, however, remains resolute in her task of finishing the letter. Hakan has no choice but to comply, patiently waiting until she completes it. Out of the blue, Hakan broaches the topic of their unborn child, asking Lucina if she has a preference for a boy or a girl. After a moment of reflection, Lucina turns the question back to Hakan, who expresses a wish for a girl. He elaborates, explaining that a dragon's daughter is considered exceedingly precious, as they are a rare occurrence, and they are expected to bear healthy offspring of their kind. Upon hearing this explanation, Lucina affirms that, for her, the gender of the child doesn't matter. Her primary concern is their well-being. Hakan chuckles in agreement with her sentiments, also underscoring that once Lucina gives birth, she will rightfully become the queen of Tayar. As they engage in conversation, a guard stationed outside the chamber interrupts, informing Hakan that Garrett is requesting permission to speak with him. Hakan promptly conveys his response, instructing the guard to tell her to leave. However, Lucina assures him that it's okay, assuming that Garrett must have something important to discuss. Reluctant, but influenced by Lucina's concern, Hakan consents to Garrett's entrance. Given the late hour, Garrett apologizes for her untimely visit. Noticing Lucina's presence, Garrett attempts to be polite and inquires whether she is interrupting. Lucina, puzzled by Garrett's sudden change in attitude towards her, responds that she is not disturbed. Hakan then urges Garrett to divulge her intentions. However, 
Garrett insists that what she has to share is for the king's ears only, and requests Lucina to leave. Haken, undeterred, asserts that Lucina should remain, as she is Tayar's future queen, and there should be nothing she cannot know or hear. With that, Garrett reveals that one of the servants who provided the dark candle to Haken had frequent contact with Gile, suggesting that Gile was the one behind the candle. Upon hearing this revelation, Lucina turns pale, unable to believe that Gile is the true culprit behind the use of dark magic. The next day, Garrett leads Haken and Turan to the basement, explaining that she noticed Gile frequented this place and it raised suspicions. She further mentions that she was never able to ascertain the contents of this location. Upon their arrival, they find the door locked, and Turan uses his axe to break it open. Garrett is confident that even if she betrays Gile, he won't be able to betray her in return. Upon entering the room, they discover an array of tools related to dark magic. Haken is astonished that he was unaware of the existence of such a place. However, he remains suspicious of Garrett's motives in exposing this. Consequently, Haken decides to apprehend Gile immediately. With Gile now imprisoned, Haken and Turan pay him a visit for questioning. Turan discreetly suggests to Haken the possibility that Garrett might have betrayed her own brother to avoid punishment. While Haken entertains the same thought, they lack concrete evidence to accuse her. Hence, they proceed with the interrogation of Gile, hoping he will divulge the truth. However, despite subjecting Gile to torture, he remains silent and does not implicate Garrett in any way. Haken and Turan find this hard to believe, particularly Haken, who is convinced of Garrett's involvement. While walking, Turan inquires about the meeting concerning Lakin's remains, and Haken explains that it was decided to expedite the process of placing Lakin's body in Meserlik. Typically, this is done after the new guardian dragon is born, but Haken believes it's best to address the matter before he becomes too preoccupied. Haken then conveys to Turan that he needs to inform Lucina about all the details. Haken begins to worry, pondering whether Lucina will be shocked upon learning that her teacher is the culprit. Furthermore, he is concerned about not being with her during such trying times, fearing that it might only intensify Lucina's distress. Haken pays a visit to Lucina, and she warmly welcomes him, mentioning that she's been practicing her writing with Titi. However, Haken's demeanor suddenly darkens as he delivers the distressing news about Gile. Lucina's expression turns sad, finding it hard to believe that Gile truly intended to harm her and Hakan, despite her previous trust in him. In an attempt to console Lucina, Hakan wraps his arms around her in a comforting hug. But there's more news to deliver, and Hakan hesitates before sharing it. Lucina notices his expression and prompts him to reveal what's troubling him. With a heavy heart, Haken informs her that he needs to leave the palace temporarily, even though he wishes to stay by her side and protect her. He explains that he has to oversee the transfer of Lakin to Meserek, a process that will take approximately one week. To ease Haken's worry, Lucina smiles and assures him that she will be just fine during the week without him. A few days later, the day of departure to Meselik arrives. Haken, accompanied by his guards, is prepared to leave and is on the verge of bidding farewell to Lucina. He draws nearer, gently caresses Lucina's face, and plants a kiss on her lips. However, Turan reminds him that they need to depart immediately. Though Haken is filled with concern, he has no option but to leave. Unbeknownst to Haken, Garrett, aware of his absence, is ready to set her plan in motion to frame Lucina. A few days after Hawkins departure, Lucina, confined to her chamber, grows increasingly bored and impatient, longing for Hakan's return. Titi notices Lucina's restlessness and believes that staying isolated in her room is making her more despondent. To lift Lucina's spirits, Titi suggests they go outside for a walk together. Initially hesitant, Lucina eventually agrees. And as they leave her room, someone takes the opportunity to enter it. 
While they are enjoying a walk in the fresh air, a guard suddenly approaches them, urging Lucina to accompany him and grabbing her arm. Lucina is taken aback by the sudden and forceful encounter. TT intervenes, pushing the guard away and inquiring about the situation. The guard explains that they discovered a suspicious object in Lucina's room and insists on inspecting it with her. Lucina is left confused and frightened by this unexpected turn of events, insisting that she doesn't understand what's happening and that no one has entered her room in the past few days. Titi firmly supports Lucina, asserting that it must be a misunderstanding. However, the guard remains indifferent, forcibly pulling Lucina's hand and insisting that she goes with him. Titi attempts to shield Lucina, but the guard pushes her to the ground and continues to press Lucina to accompany him. The guard forcibly ushers Lucina inside the room, where Garrett awaits with a devious expression on her face. She casually mentions that the guard discovered something unusual in Lucina's room. The guard proceeds to present Lucina with the item, and it is revealed to be a dark candle. Confused, Lucina questions the presence of the candle, but Garrett seizes this opportunity to accuse her. Lucina attempts to defend herself, explaining that she has no knowledge of the candle. However, Garrett counters her with evidence, claiming that the temple's examination confirmed the candle contained some form of magic. Garrett coldly asserts that, in accordance with the law, until Haken returns, Lucina must remain confined to her room. This news terrifies Lucina, causing her to tremble with fear. Meanwhile, in Meserlik, after placing Lakin's body there, Haken pays his last respects to Lakin, vowing to bring the murderer to justice. He instructs them to proceed with the procedure immediately and to return as soon as they are finished. Haken can't help but express his concern about leaving Lucina alone, fearing that something might happen to her in his absence. Back in the palace, Lucina is consumed by depression following the recent events. She is so lost in her thoughts that she doesn't even notice Puka's presence as he comes to visit her. Puka watches her from the window, clearly concerned about her well-being. Suddenly, two masked men approach Lucina's room from the outside. Sensing a dangerous situation, Puka decides to take flight and find Haken. The window in Lucina's room shatters, and the assassins make their way inside to abduct her. Lucina desperately tries to call for help, but her cries go unanswered. Garrett, who orchestrated this scheme, smirks with satisfaction as she believes that Lucina has been taken away by the assassins and will soon meet her demise, making it nearly impossible to find her body. The assailants forcefully take Lucina on horseback, covering her mouth and binding her hands. Puka watches in growing concern. However, a sudden downpour prompts them to seek shelter in a nearby cave. Realizing the opportunity to escape, Lucina gathers her courage and makes a run for it. Unfortunately, she trips and falls, injuring herself and causing her to bleed, which only heightens her fear. As the assassins prepare to carry out their deadly intentions, a group of knights arrives and quickly eliminates them. Lucina wonders if Haken has come to her rescue. However, as the knight draws near and removes his helmet, Lucina is taken aback when she recognizes him as her stepbrother from Berg. In the Tayar Palace, Haken has returned earlier than expected. As he walks through the palace, he encounters a concerned guard who seems troubled by Hakan's arrival. On his way to visit Lucina, he crosses paths with Titi and inquires about any recent developments during his absence. Titi explains that Garrett has accused Lucina of using dark magic and subsequently confined her to her room. Upon hearing this, Hawkins' anger flares, finding it hard to believe that anyone would give credence to Garrett's claims. He swiftly makes his way to Lucina's chamber, and as he opens the door, he is met with the shocking sight of an empty room with shattered windows. Prior to this, Lucina's stepbrother had encountered an unknown wizard who presented him with a solution to his ongoing predicament. His life had taken a turn for the worse after the last attack by Tayar, and the wizard assured him that the king's anger would soon subside if he brought Lucina to him. 
This is why he is now saving Lucina from the assassins with the wizard's assistance. The wizard conducts a quick examination of Lucina's unborn child, and they receive the reassuring news that the baby is in good health. Lucina's stepbrother expresses his relief upon hearing this. Though it leaves Lucina puzzled as to why he is so concerned about her child's well-being. As Lucina's stepbrother instructs his knights to take her with them, she adamantly refuses, insisting on returning to Tayar. His patience wears thin, and he berates her for enjoying a life of happiness in Tayar, while he and his mother have been living in poverty. He raises his hand to strike her, but their confrontation is interrupted by a resounding roar from above. In a surprising turn of events, Hakan, in his dragon form, appears flying overhead. As he spots Lucina on the ground, he descends rapidly. Lucina's stepbrother is left bewildered, as his knowledge indicated that Hakan was away for some time, and he also realizes that the wizard has already fled the scene. Hakan, consumed by rage and having returned to his human form, unleashes his fury upon the knights, instructing Lucina to close her eyes for her safety. When he confronts Lucina's stepbrother, who trembles in fear, Hakan angrily accuses him of attempting to kidnap his wife once again. Lucina's stepbrother desperately tries to explain that there is a misunderstanding, but Hakan pays no heed and swiftly eliminates him on the spot. Lucina, in tears and trembling, implores Hakan to stop. He rushes to her side, expressing his deep concern for her after witnessing her distress. Lucina, exhausted, requests that Hakan take her back to the palace, as she is emotionally drained. The following day, back in the palace, Lucina is resting and receives a checkup from the priest, who reassures Hakan that the baby in her womb is healthy. He advises Hakan to get some rest, as he has gone without sleep for several days. However, Hakan declines the suggestion, determined to resolve the matter at hand and make sure that those who dared to frame his wife face justice. The day of reckoning for Garrett finally arrives. With her hands bound, she awaits her judgment. Hakan, as the king of Tayar, charges Garrett as the mastermind behind the dark magic conspiracy. Upon hearing this, Garrett attempts to evade responsibility, claiming ignorance. However, Hakan remains resolute and orders the guards to bring Gilai before them. Gilai begins to confess everything. He admits to practicing black magic at his sister's behest for a prolonged period, even as he suffered from the adverse effects of dark magic. Despite Gilai's testimony, Garrett still clings to denial, insisting that it's all a falsehood. Unmoved by her protests, Hakan reveals that Garrett's own maids have provided incriminating statements. Garrett, now pallid and terrified, faces her sentencing. Hakan, taking into account her use of dark magic to harm Tayar's queen and king, strips her of her former queen consort title and sentences her to death. However, Jilay pleads with Hakan to consider his sister's punishment, acknowledging his own complicity in her actions and her dedicated service to Tayar. Other attendees also join in, beseeching Hakan to reconsider. In light of these pleas, Hakan revises Garrett's sentence. Instead of death, he orders her to be imprisoned in the Southern Palace, marked as a reminder of her crime. Jilay, too, faces consequences, but because he fully confessed his actions, Hakan decrees that he shall bear a visible mark on his body and endure hard labor as his punishment. A few days later, in Lucina's chamber, her somber mood persists due to the news about Gile. Recognizing her distress, Hakan attempts to lift her spirits with some heartening news. He reveals that, during a meeting, it was decided that Lucina would be appointed as the temporary queen. The notion that she would become queen even if only temporarily, overwhelms Lucina with disbelief. However, there's a catch. She can assume the role of queen after the wedding ceremony. Hakan's eagerness grows as he alludes to another surprise in store. He signals for Titi to open the door, revealing Ader's presence. Lucina's face lights up with joy at the sight of Hakan's mother. 
Yet, it becomes apparent that Adar hasn't fully regained her mental faculties, as she struggles to recognize Lucina. The lingering effects of black magic continue to cloud Adar's mind, and Hakan is determined to help her break free from its influence. Lucina, eager to offer assistance, extends an invitation for Adar to reside with her in the palace. She suggests that they seek Gile's help in dispelling the lingering black magic, reasoning that the one who cast it may also possess the knowledge to undo its effects. Although initially hesitant, Hakan ultimately agrees with Lucina's proposal. In Berg, Lucina's stepmother, Baroness Berg, paces anxiously, awaiting her son's return. When a woman with striking features, blonde hair, and silver eyes, accompanied by her retinue of knights, approaches her, Baroness Berg is both startled and angered by this unexpected arrival. The woman greets Lucina's stepmother with an air of casual familiarity, only to have her shocked questions regarding her abandonment of her own daughter hurled back at her. It is then revealed that this enigmatic woman is Lucina's birth mother, and she coldly informs Baroness Berg that her husband and son have already met their demise. Baroness Berg is devastated and refuses to accept this grim news. However, her denial is abruptly cut short as she begins to cough up blood, collapsing to the ground. Lucina's birth mother, wielding dark powers, is responsible for her sudden and fatal affliction. Lucina's birth mother, undaunted, asserts that with Lucina's child safely on the way, she is poised to become the genuine queen of Tayar rendering the Berg family no longer of use to her. She coldly declares that, once Lucina's child is born, Tayar will unquestionably belong to her. Feel free to hit the like button and leave a comment below. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed every moment of it.